The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Five yards from a shot at the national championship. The clock is moving. Murray, it's caught by Conley at the five. We can't stop the clock. Nine months of devastation. We ran out of time. Or motivation. Quarterback Aaron Murray returns for a fifth year and a final BCS run. He leads the Bulldogs back with a 79-mile gut check to Clemson's fame, Death Valley. Taj Boyd, last year's ACC Player of the Year and the Tigers, welcome their next state neighbors with something less than Southern hospitality. With unfinished business on both sides, a victory gives the winner a chance to fulfill their championship dreams. It's high stakes in South Carolina. of the ACC on ESPN. You are looking live at Clemson Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, where the game of the weekend is about to unfold. Number five, Georgia, at number eight, Clemson. Two high-powered offenses about to slug it out for the right to shout contender when the night is over while the loser must slink away, being dubbed simply Pretender. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> We're Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brett Musburger. What a way to start a new season. Clemson and Georgia. Herbie, this is our eighth night together on Saturday Night Football. And already this weekend, so many notable storylines. It's been a, a great way to start this year's college football season. It really started on Thursday night with some games that went into the wee hours. Continued last night with Kansas State getting upset. Some great games this afternoon. But I think every college football fan has been building for this game tonight here at Clemson between Georgia and these Clemson Tigers. Are you ready for some points, folks? <laughs> Georgia came in averaging 39 points a game last year. Uh, they're very, very fortunate to have a veteran quarterback. One of the most experienced quarterbacks quarterbacks this year in the country and Aaron Murray. Aaron Murray is an intelligent quarterback. He's seen every atmosphere. He will not be intimidated by this crowd. He knows how to get his teammates ready to make plays. And I think that's a, a very important thing <clears throat> as he takes a, let's face it, he's got a, a group around him that can make big plays. He, got to, he has a balanced attack with Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall. And I think that's a big thing that they want to try to do. Run the football with Gurley and Marshall to set up some big play opportunities in the pass game off of play action. That's where Murray typically thrives. And believe it or not, Clemson averaged, oh, 41 points a game last year. And again, another team with a veteran quarterback. Taj Boyd has been sensational. You know, Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, came in a couple years ago. Gets a lot of fanfare. Well, his quarterback last year was the ACC Player of the Year. This is his third year in the system, which allows him to really make a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage. They'll give him some flexibility and freedom tonight against an inexperienced Georgia secondary. Georgia last year had a veteran group. A lot of individuals that went on to the NFL. Well, they have a talented group this year, but how will they respond to the bright lights in the big stage against a veteran with the tempo that they're going to have to face tonight? So the point of this exercise is who will come up with a defense before the night's over? I'm with you. I mean, the more you look at the film, and a lot of this is going off of last year, and you're, we don't have preseason football in college football, so you're kind of assuming some things, and you wonder how true freshmen, they, and Georgia has, has uh, six of them in the secondary alone in their two deep. You just wonder how they'll respond. They might be great, but it's very, very different in practice versus what they're going to see tonight against Taj Boyd. Crowd tonight in excess of 84,000. This rivalry began in 1897. But folks, they haven't played in the last 10 years. The one tonight, it figures to be a dandy.
Nissan pregame rush with John Saunders and Jesse Palmer is next after these messages. Yo, I got dibs. Guys. While you're up, can you give me a cold drink? <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, it's game time. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Georgia's Todd Gurley. He rushed for better than 1,300 yards and scored 17 touchdowns. And on the other side, the game breaker for Clemson, Sammy Watkins. They will try to go deep with him tonight. This has been the Nissan pregame rush from Clemson, South Carolina. And now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Lemonade on the front porch? What are you guys, 80? Kids these days. <laughs> Lemonade on the front porch? What are you guys, 80? <laughs> Kids these days, Earl. I mean. This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. One of the great traditions that you have to see at least once. The Clemson players file out of the locker room and they board buses to come around the stadium before they pour down the hill on the field. Kirby, did you ever take a bus from the <laughs> locker room? I think it's fascinating that they get on buses out of the locker room, go around the stadium, and then come down the hill. The team boarded those three buses. Coach Dabo Sweeney is on bus number one, and they will now prepare to drive around the stadium. Here you can just feel the emotion and the thoughts of the players as they come around the stadium knowing that they're going to be met by 84,000 and they'll run down onto this field and the balloons will come up. It is spectacular. Just like all great traditions, you, you sometimes select a school to be a part of a tradition like this. They've been lifting weights since they beat LSU, thinking about what they could achieve in 2013, and now they're on the bus for the first time here in Death Valley about to come down the hill. Herbie, I've seen this many, many times. But I have never watched it live from this point. No. It'll take these cool. buses now about one minute to come around the stadium. And there are some fans outside, those unlucky ones <laughs> who don't have tickets, and they will applaud and wave to the team as they come around now to the far end of Clemson Memorial Stadium. And here comes the motorcade. What a scene. And what a moment. Brent, I've always seen these players run down the hill, but I've never seen this perspective of how they get to the top of that hill. About to run down that hill into Death Valley and take on the number five team in the nation, the Georgia Bulldogs. Just one of those unbelievable traditions in college football and it never grows old if you like to go to different stadiums around the country to see one game i would recommend be sure that clemson is on that list it is spectacular the whole stadium now just waiting looking at the top of that hill under the scoreboard
Ladies and gentlemen, I call this Clemson entrance the most exciting 25 seconds in college football back in 1985, and it remains true today. Here it is, the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. Georgia had to take a peek. Pickoff is next after this message and a word from our ABC station. We welcome you back to ESPN Saturday Night Football, number five against number eight. And we have got humidity in the South Carolina air here tonight, but our forecast is mostly clear. There were some thunderstorms earlier today. Dabo Sweeney, who's done an outstanding job at Clemson, standing by with Heather, so let's go to them now. Brett, thanks so much, Coach. As we just saw you run down the hill, you can tell that the energy and the stakes are at an all-time high. What indications has your team given you today that they're ready for this challenge? Well, the biggest thing is just this is why you do it. You know, have some fun. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the opportunity. Make no mistake, the fun's into winning. Five or six plays that'll make the difference tonight. We got to play every play with a with a toughness, an effort, and a, just a can't be denied attitude all night long. But you know, enjoy it. Coach, congrats, enjoy it. Thank you, Brent. Well, there are some Georgia fans here tonight. If you look hard enough, you can see dog red over there in the corner. The cheerleaders and the band, of course, both here. Bottle on the mascot. Ugga's got his air-conditioned seat to watch. And Aaron Murray begins to loosen up. Young man, a Heisman Trophy candidate. Finished off the year with a bowl victory over Nebraska. He came ever so close to playing for a national championship. So unfinished business for him. Georgia won the toss, Herbie. And they are going to defer out there, Coach Mark Rowe. And that means we're going to get a good look at Taj Boyd and the Tigers' offense to start this, this season off. They're going to be very aggressive in how they attack from the very first snap against this uh, youthful Georgia defense. third year in this system and you'll see him do some things at the line of scrimmage where it's it's this spread offense you've seen it when you watch college football up tempo with chad morris trying to get over 90 snaps today if they can 
And when you have a quarterback that's experienced in that system, it allows you to play faster. That's what they're going to try to do tonight. Up tempo. Roderick McDowell is the starting tailback. Andre Ellington moved on to the NFL in their script earlier. They ran him on the first play. We'll see if they do exactly that. Play action. They're going to come up and throw this time on first down. Nobody there. And Todd Boyd takes off with Sterling Bailey bringing him down early. And here's Clemson on the very first play taking a chance, thinking that Georgia might be collapsing down in the run game. And they want to go downfield. Great coverage by the dogs downfield. And that inexperienced secondary, give them, give them a check plus on that play. That was a coverage sack by the dogs. Slips a screen to Watkins on the outside. And that will bring up third and long. And one of the veterans, Herrera, number 52, making his first stop of the game. Chad Morris is in his third year calling plays. He and Taj Boyd have a special relationship. Taj was in on the meeting when Morris was hired by Dabo Swain. So he actually approved this offense that you're watching him run here tonight. Flushed again and throws high, and it is three and out. So the young dog defense does an outstanding job on their first defensive series. And Leonard Floyd, a linebacker and a true freshman, he comes right through the interior, the Clemson defense, and they brought more that Clemson could handle on that right side, confused the right side, and got pressure. Damian Swan back to field this punt. The veteran defensive back from the 15 trying to get it outside. Fumble. Ball is on the ground. And they say he's down. The back judge says that Swan was down and no fumble. Ball came loose and Clemson pounced on it. I don't think there's any question his arm is down and then the ball came out. It's like his right elbow may have touched and then the football came out. So, it's a good call there by the official right on top of it. So the dogs will start from their own 20-yard line. Send three receivers out to the right. And Brent Venables puts 11 players on the field. The umpire throws the flag. The 12th man was coming off the sideline for Clemson. So, Herbie, the Tigers are lucky that time they were shorthanded. Yeah, Robert Smith, one of the leaders in the secondary. I don't know what he was waiting on, but Clemson catches a break with a, with a uh, five-yard penalty on Georgia. But Robert Smith wasn't even on the field until the ball was snapped. Now Murray, after covering it, gets into the goalie's hands, and he is gang tackled. The Tigers crawl all over. Early after the reception. This is Brent Venable's goal tonight. The defensive coordinator gang tackled the big back. Get after him with a lot of bodies. He's got to be proud of that effort there on the swing pass off to the right. Second down and 14. Maurice steps up and it is complete to Chris Conley. <laughs> So Aaron Murray is the senior from Plant High School in Tampa, Florida. He's been working on his footwork during the offseason. 42nd career start, four-year starter, which is very rare in Athens. His experience will be big time. Has time incomplete. Malcolm Mitchell, number 26, the intended target that time. The, the knock on Murray is he's a rhythmic quarterback. He wants to get back, hitch, ball out. Watch here. He, he has to hitch, hitch, hitch. He's not as accurate with his throw when you make him hold on to the football. It's a good series that time to start the game for Brent Venables and the Tigers defense. Kevin Barber back, and here comes Watkins again. Remember, he has touched the ball on the kickoff. They threw to him for putting the ball in number two's hands. 
Beautiful punt. Fair catch. At the 24 yard line. Second series coming up. A little nerves demonstrated by both these teams earlier. Herbie, you said all along this is our impact matchup of the night. Yeah, you have some fresh run in the back end, both Langley and Matthews and Bryant and Watkins can make big plays. Off the play action, they throw on the first down to Stanton Seconder. And Stanton Seconder could be a big story because in Chad Morris's offense, the tight end is big. Sam Cooper out for the season, injured last spring. Jordan Leggett practicing, but perhaps will not play tonight. So Seconder steps in, big shoes to fill. Here is McDowell on his first run. You know, they've been talking to the coaches about McDowell. They said, you know, don't misunderstand. He got quality, quality snaps last year. Yeah, he got enough reps, I think, have the confidence that it takes to be able to take over for Andre Ellington. Coming with him again, and he is met right away by Garrison Smith, one of the veterans on that dog defense. Jordan Jenkins helping out as well. The young man that they're trying to compare to Jarvis Jones, who's now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He penetrates and makes a big-time play there for this Georgia defense. McDowell didn't have a chance. Yeah, Jenkins, uh, let me correct what I said. Jenkins makes a big-time play on that. Now on third down. Great pressure. Boyd steps away from it and fires complete to Sammy Watkins. Big time move by Taj Boyd when he was under pressure. Brent, I, and I think he wanted to go deep to Sammy Watkins on a double move. Great job of improvising and getting his feet set to make an accurate throw for the first down. The dog front doing a good job, and this is what Taj Boyd can do with defense as he keeps it and crosses the 40-yard line to the 39. Well, now they start pick up, picking up first downs. That's when they really will get the tempo going to try to get the defense on its heels, and Georgia has a, a player down. Let's go back to that third down where it looked like he wanted to try to catch the true freshman, Langley, who we talked about in the matchup. See, inside slant and then try to get by him. Langley doesn't buy it on it. And now he's got a quarterback running for his life. Good job coming back to the football that time by Watkins. Watkins, I think, is ready to have a big year. He had some injuries. He was suspended last year early. Put on a little bit of weight. He's back down to about 205. He's had a great camp. And Dabo Sweeney and Chad Morris are expecting big, big things this year from number two. Freshman Leonard Floyd was the player who was shaken up. And, of course, the crowd booing a little bit because against an up-tempo offense, any time a defensive player goes down, they think he's faking. <laughs> the officials right. can't read somebody's mind, so right. they're going to treat it as an injury on the field every time. Second down and six. There is Chad Morris, a high school coaching legend in the state of Texas. His third year at Clemson, spent one year at Tulsa, and what a wide-open, high-powered offense he has orchestrated. McDowell keeps it. McDowell short of the 30-yard line. Trey Matthews, the outstanding freshman safety from Newman, Georgia, with the stop. And they come with the tempo. You talked about McDowell. I think he is like a bird that's been in a cage. He's had to pay his dues. He's excited to have finally an opportunity. Slip it to the outside again. Peak crosses the 10 yard line. Boyd has many options in this offense, Herbie. And when he comes up to the line of scrimmage, it's up to him to either run or pass. And he saw something with Sharon Peak. And he had a soft, cover soft coverage that time. And if you play his receiver soft, he's just going to put the ball out there and let his playmakers make plays. McDowell to the middle of that defensive front. This drive is textbook of what Chad Morris tries to do. It's their eighth play, 72 yards so far. They have George on their heels. They've attacked outside with the quick throws. They attack up the middle with McDowell. Back to the outside, back to the inside. They're really putting this Georgia defense on this drive, back on their heels, and they've lost their aggression. McDowell motions out, Taj keeps it himself, touchdown.
So after three and out, the Tigers march from their own 24 to the touchdown. Presented by Windows. Brought to you by Windows. Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Chevrolet. Find new roads. First Friday parade. It's been held the day before the first home game every year since 1974 here at Clemson. Atlanta sends Todd Gurley and Malcolm Mitchell back. Turn to kick off. Mitchell will let this one go and it'll come out on the 25 yard line. It will be first down and 10. And Herbie, you said during that commercial, now we're going to find out what Aaron Murray is made of here early tonight. Well, last time you and I had Aaron Murray on the road, it was South Carolina. The game got away from him and the Bulldogs in a hurry. A similar atmosphere. And now they're down. I think they really grew up after that South Carolina game. We saw them against Alabama. They played sensationally. But now here they are on the road, three and out. I think they have to run the football. They've got to win the battle at the line of scrimmage with Gurley and Marshall to be able to get Aaron Murray to where he ultimately wants to be here off play after pass. They show power eye and toss to Gurley. Gurley breaks free on the far side. Foot race, great speed. Gurley won't be caught. It took one play from scrimmage for sophomore Todd Gurley to take it 75 yards, and the Dogs are an extra point away from the tie. Let the points begin. He just said, run the football. Get that running game going, and then that opens things up for Aaron Murray. Now, we're going to talk a lot about Todd Gurley, but a lot of attention needs to go to Crayon Hicks. The fullback number 48 who opened that hole off of Arthur Lynch, the big tight end. Two big blocks. Patrick Bielus is on to get the extra point. So Marshall Morgan sits it out. What you love about Gurley is he runs through arm tackles, but here he got out in the open. And he shows that he has some speed. He can take it all the way to the end zone. That's a big play for Georgia. Well, Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues Monday night from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Florida State versus Pittsburgh Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. So Todd Gurley, the first rushing play of the night for the dogs and he takes it for the touchdown and we are not enough and seven barbers kickoff fielded at the five yard line by Bryant. the previous one of the wide receivers who turns this one Brent, I know you know John Robinson, former USC coach. He'd be proud of this student body right. Right guard, Chris Burnett, pulls around. He's lit there at number three. Gets a great block. The fullback, Hicks, has a nice block. The tight end, Arthur Lynch. They open that play up. Gur Gurley is a great back. But when you open up a hole like this, it gives you an indication. Gurley's not just a powerful back to run through tackles, but he's got great speed. I want to talk about the Heisman Trophy, folks. You're looking at a candidate right there. No doubt. He could Big be the best back in the country. Three. Yep. Zach Brooks is now your running back for Clemson. The 
Osborne pulls it away, flips it to Watkins again. Watkins breaks a tackle. Great breakout speed and a foot race. Watkins goes. Touchdown. Oh, my. Back to back. Huge plays from scrimmage. This one's 77 yards from Ty Boyd to Sammy Watkins. Trophy candidates all over the field. You just saw two of them, both Taj and Watkins. Oh, man. We thought it might be a shootout tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Catanzaro knocks it through the upright. Play action. Get the ball out to Sammy Watkins. He breaks the tackle. And he breaks the tackle with that kind of speed. Dangerous. <laughs> Folks, if you just joined us, these two teams both started three and out. Since then, on the last three plays from scrimmage, we've had three long touchdowns. Well, Taj Boyd was not that long. It was a long drive. It's 14-7 Tigers. Again coming out of the 25. We go back to this play, and you can see the safety, Chris Norman, get out of position on the play action. He bites up with this action right here. Once he gets out of position, you see a quick boy get rid of the football, but the adjustment by Sammy Watkins to get back, the ball's thrown behind it, makes the catch, and this is what he can do with this kind of speed. One arm tackle, he breaks. Damian Swan, terrible effort. Where did he wrap up? He just used his shoulder. So Keith Marshall, number four, checks in. The other half of the dynamic duo, Todd Gurley and Al Marshall, both youngsters from North Carolina. And Marshall is number four with great ability. Play action to him. Murray in trouble on the move. Fires, juggle, caught, reaching for. Beautifully that time is Michael Bennett. And Michael Bennett was one of Murray's favorite targets until he tore an ACL midway through last season. But here he is back, and they tell us he's been practicing well, Herbert. It's great to see him back. And what an amazing catch here. Ball's underthrown, but he makes the play. They quickly bring Marshall to his first running play across midfield. Now you throw Bennett along with Malcolm Mitchell and Chris Conley together with the backs that they have and the experience from Murray. And it's pretty uh, Brady Jarrett has left the field and he's a vital part of that defensive line. Second down and four. He sees man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. See if he checks and tries to go down field. Doing just that. Incomplete and a penalty flag. Bennett was roughed up. Breland had the coverage over there. He started at one corner tonight and That's Robinson at the other. Jam coverage. Ball's in the air and he still has contact. Yeah, the no offi question. yeah officials right there standing right in front of him. He jammed it. The jam was okay, but once the ball's in the air, you can't continue to hit the receiver. Yeah, he kept his right hand right yeah. First down and 10. Marshall. Brought down at the 36-yard line, Travis Blanks. The safety who made a huge interception against LSU for some sort of makes the stop. One of the things Aaron Murray looks at at the line of scrimmage, they'll give him two or three plays. He's looking at the safeties. He's trying to get an idea if it's two safeties that are high or if it's one safety. And he's calling a run or a pass based on the safety's alignment right here. So yeah, I'm looking at him. Right now he's trying to figure that's eight in the box. He's trying to throw the football. Takes it back. Got one on one, but it is in. Complete. Conley was the intended target. 
because of the balance and the versatility, the way Georgia wants to attack, and you have a quarterback that started for four years, Mike Bobo, who's the offensive coordinator, likes to give Aaron Murray that freedom to just count the numbers. And if they're committed to stopping this running game, we've got to be able to throw. A tough third down. Murray needs seven yards. Trying to get it with Marshall. And they are short. Freeland again. Great penetration by Vic Beasley as well. Vic Beasley at 235 pounds. Able to get off his man with quickness. They say he's one of the strongest guys on this team, even though he's only 235 pounds. There you go for it. It's fourth down and four. This shows you that the field goal situation for Georgia is very shaky tonight. Fires out to the outside, breaking the tackle. Justin Scott Wesley that time. And they pick up the first down at the 23-yard line. A fourth down completion by Aaron Murray. He's throwing the tight ends and these receivers. There's seven or eight different players that, that are reliable and can make plays. Great throw that time on fourth down. He stepped right into it, made an accurate throw. Todd Gurley returns as the eye back. Here is number three again to the 20-yard line and Deshaun Williams making the stop. Clemson trying to rotate bodies. There's Gurley walking off a little gingerly. Jenkins is shaken up on the Clemson sideline, but Grady Jarrett, number 50, has returned to the defensive line. And he is quite a story defensively. Now Gurley goes off on the other sideline. Let's see him at the end of this play, Herbie, and see. I couldn't tell with that new play what might have occurred down there, but he's back out of the game, and Marshall returns. Marshall into the middle of that defensive front. He's short of the 25-yard line. We referred to the kicking situation. Marshall Morgan figured to be the kicker for Georgia this season, but he got it into a little trouble while boating, and he got a BUI. Coach Rick has been a little bit quiet about what he was going to do to penalize the young man, but when the extra point occurred, it was Patrick Bielas who stepped out, and he's a sophomore from Atlanta. So it is second down and 13 from the 25-yard line for the dog. Play action. Plenty of time. Firing complete. And a first and goal. Scott Wesley. He's going to try to find the hole behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. He puts the ball again right on the money, and he throws it on time to give his receiver this time enough ch a chance to be able to make the play over the linebacker, Anthony. And you got to throw that on a line to give your receiver a chance to protect himself and get down before he gets hit. Marshall, the running back. Dogs with a first and goal, trailing by seven, and still five minutes remaining here in the opening quarter. Fires and incomplete and almost intercepted. Gary Peters that time did a great job of protecting the goal line. Aaron Murray loves the back shoulder fade, and this time he didn't throw it to the back shoulder at Bennett. He threw it to the, the front side. Now Gurley is headed back to the locker room. And we certainly will get an update and pass it along to you as soon as we hear. Meanwhile, with Keith Marshall in the backfield, it is second down and goal. That play is stopped by the official. Prior to the snap, timeout, Clemson. Their first charge time out of the half. So the defense saw something coached by Brent Venables, who came to the Tigers from Oklahoma, where he worked for Bob Stoops. And Gurley headed on inside the dog's locker room. You know, the other thing is Malcolm Mitchell, their best receiver, 
has not been on the field the last series either. So you've got you've got a you know I know we're seeing points, but a hard hitting game tonight. You take Malcolm Mitchell and Todd Gurley, two of their superstars out of the lineup. That's pretty significant. Now, Heather, what do you hear about Mitchell down below? Well, right now Mitchell does have a bag of ice on his right knee. I'm still waiting to hear whether or not he can return. Todd Gurley has gone back to the locker room, like you saw. Also, Clemson's DB Martin Jenkins in the locker room. He had a separated shoulder. They're trying to get that back in so he can finish out the game. More to come, guys. Thanks, Heather. And meanwhile, the dogs with a second down and goal from just outside the five-yard line. Remember, Mitchell was back returning kickoffs. And then they had to take him off before the last Clemson kick. So here's your second down and goal. Marshall's turn dives to about the three yard line and it will bring up a third and goal and remember they have fine tight ends as we check in down below again with Heather. Friend, I was able to gather a few more details. Bad news for the Bulldog fans. Malcolm Mitchell is out of this game with a right knee injury. Todd Gurley having his left thigh checked. He is out for now. Oh, that is a blow and a possible double blow. But it is third down and goal for the veteran quarterback, Murray. And he hands on a counter, and Marshall all battling toward that end zone. With a big fella in the interior that time, D.J. Reeder, a great athlete, reads his play well. He gives you an idea of what kind of power Keith Marshall has. You think of Gurley with the power. Boy, I, you think the knee was down, Herbie, or did he extend it? Very, very close. It's worth another look. See if he extended the football across before the knee touched. Instant replay upstairs. We'll take a look at that scoring play as it's ruled on the field by Keith Marshall. Indisputable, yeah. of course, is the only way they can turn it over. I told you before the game, I was down on the field, and you look at Todd Gurley, he's 235 pounds and just a big back. You think of Marshall as the smaller back. And then you look at him up close, he is a big back with speed. Let's, this is the best look I think we can look at right here. The crowd just voted no touchdown. They saw the angle as it's being shown up on the big replay I think, board here. I think it's Clemson. a touchdown, personally. That's hard. So the crowd and Herbie in their first the disagreement. The there you are. Herbie is right, and the crowd is wrong. <laughs> but the power for Marshall, remarkable. Two significant losses in Gurley for now. And of course, Mitchell, who seemed to be battling injuries most of his career. So here's the sophomore kicker tonight, Patrick Bielis, replacing Marshall Morgan here in the first half. And he knocks the score at 14. Four touchdowns and still four minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. This is the luxury of having another talented back in that backfield and to run this kind of offense. I mean, he, he, he was hit by Reeder, who's 325 pounds, at about the four-yard line. I mean, he, and this, that initial contact's right there, and then the leg drive, and then he extends and reaches for the touchdown. It's an impressive run by Marshall. Well, the votes are in, and fans have deemed this the blimp-worthy game of the week. So aerial coverage being provided by Goodyear from Clemson, South Carolina. Where there is superior performance, Goodyear is there. Goodyear more driven. We have had 28 snaps from scrimmage in this game, and four of them have resulted in touchdowns. Could be a tired dog before the night is over. Gonna be busy. What is the way this game's going? It is humid. It is muggy. Both teams are gonna make a lot of linemen. And this one will come out on the 25-yard line, and here comes Taj Boyd. Ever since the three and out. They put together a nine-play drive, and then they hit the big touchdown to Sammy Watkins where he broke the, the arm tackle by Damian Swan. You know, Nate, we have not called tonight is Martavius Bryant, number one, a guy that they feel can take some of the pressure off. And he's had, you know, I know he hadn't been out. 
Yeah, they did use him the one time on a kickoff game mm -hmm. when they took Watkins out. But yep. right, they haven't, they haven't thrown a ball to him yet. And now Zach Brooks. And with Roderick McDowell. And so they have two running backs, and McDowell gets the call on first down. They lost one of the better backs, I thought, in the country, and Andre Ellington last year. But they've recruited very, very well at this position. McDowell's paid his dues, and the senior feels it's his turn. He and Zach Brooks, both the top two backs they have. In the hole on the left side. You know, you know what we gained, I think, a lot of appreciation for McDowell? When you and I turned on the film to be reminded of how much he played against LSU in that bowl game and how physical he ran against that LSU defense. Man, of course, Chad telling us in the last five or six games they used him a lot. So they're moving behind this offensive line, and here's good news for the Georgia Bulldogs. Gurley is returning, and it looks like he means business the way he's carrying that helmet. So the big fella appears ready to go back in. Howard and Brooks are now the two running backs. That's Brooks in motion. And they bring Watkins on the end of round, and he cuts back to the middle, trying to get him daylight. And the dogs were very disciplined on defense that time, and they did not give him a lot of space. Sterling Bailey, number 58, helped blow it up. And also Josh Dawson, a sophomore. He's kind of a defensive end, outside linebacker, 91, did a good job of staying home and staying disciplined there. Remember, this tempo wears you out on a hot Cuban night like this not just trying to match up from the XO standpoint, it's dealing with the tempo and the way they're attacking as quickly as they are. So this is the third time, and you see Coach Chad Morris down there. This is the third time now that his, his offense has come to the line of scrimmage with a third down situation. They were stopped in their opening series, three and out, but they certainly converted the second one, and now he is down there with Taj Boyd making the big call. Something to keep in mind, just kind of a, a bigger picture issue potentially for Georgia. We're, we're still early in this game, and it's hot, and it's humid. There's going to be a lot of points and a lot of you hitting. Noticed. And they have, so yeah, I know. And they play South Carolina next week. And a couple weeks later, Boy. they play LSU. So it's not just about this game, a non-conference game. It's about getting out of this game healthy and being ready for some big, even bigger games down the road. So you have to keep an eye on their depth. They've already lost Malcolm Mitchell for this game. And we've seen Gurley have to go in and get taped up. So it's something if you're a Georgia fan, you're concerned about. Yeah, absolutely. So here is your third down and eight now for Clemson. Plus coverage by the corner at the bottom. You can see Swan tightening up. Taj is in trouble, and he's going to have to throw it away. I don't think that ball got to the line of scrimmage. Well, that was a, that was close. That is Jenkins again. So he's putting the heat on Taj Boyd. And maybe they apparently ruled that it yeah, did. Yeah. But there wasn't a receiver anywhere close to that. He was outside of the tackle box. He threw it to the bench. He did Number not reach the line of scrimmage. So Swan is back. Pinion punting it. Let's it roll. Can Clemson down it? They do. At the three-yard line. Tough field position coming up for Murray and the dog. That's a really good effort here, an outstanding punt. And Shuey does a good job of not sometimes you see these guys take it in to the end zone. He did a good job of getting on top of it and batting it back. So backed up in the shadow of their own goal line. They get breathing room out at the 13-yard line. Keith Marshall continues as the Dogs running back. And they run the fullback right straight ahead into daylight, and he breaks free. Clemson not expecting 
Quavon Hicks and the sophomore from Blackshear, Georgia. He brings him out of darkness. Mike, they're basically a goal line defense here. Mike Bobo told me that this guy is like the, like the, the John Connor from, uh, from uh, the uh, Hard Knock series. You can see him block. Just a big warrior back there. You can see that when he gets his hands on the football, he can make some things happen. That's a 37-yard gain for the fullback. Marshall to the 40-yard line. They need to get to midfield if they want to move the chains here again. We check in down below now with Heather. Brett and Herbie, a little bit more information on Todd Burley. He came out with a very pronounced limp. He's got extra padding on that injured left thigh. He's been on the bike trying to loosen him up, but I've been told his status is, quote, out for now. We'll keep an eye on him. Well, Mitchell declared out. Burley pedaling away. And it's going to be up to Keith Marshall right now. Complete to the far side and a first down as he comes across midfield. Justin Scott Wesley has been Murray's number one target here. Herbie. And, and they, they describe him as a guy who used to be a track guy. He's learning to run routes. He ran a 10 2 hundred in high school in Georgia. So he's worked his tail off in the summer with Aaron Murray and these other receivers to, to understand the route adjustments. Aaron Murray now has confidence in him. And you're right, he's off to a great start tonight. Defender jumped back after coming across the line. Really using a hand signal to his receiver. And Conley. Looks like that ball may have been tipped close to the line of scrimmage. And then short hopped it. Yeah. That's pretty clear right there. So ball will be spotted back at the 49-yard line of Clemson. The first down mark is at the 39-yard line, so it's second down and 10. Marshall trying to pick his way, which no more than a couple. And a flag on the play. It's like a hook now. Brett Venables that time went with the blitz, a run stopper. Tip there by the Holding. formation. Offense number 61, 10-yard penalty, second down. Georgia is a versatile offense. They'll, they'll line up in four wide receivers. They'll line up in an eye formation. Venable said, you know, big thing we have to do is be violent, violent at the line of scrimmage, whether it's the defensive line or linebackers. So when we looked at film of Florida last year against Georgia, and you look at South Carolina, said it was Mike Bobo there on the left, his offense, when they get into a rhythm and they can run the football, they're tough to stop. We've got to win that battle up front. So with the penalty, the ball is brought back to the 41 of Georgia, and it is second down and 20. Murray running out of trouble, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage plus on that fine run. And this is something he and Mike Bobo said. I mean, how can he get better in year four, he said, I came in as a dual guy, an athlete, and I've been trained to sit in the pocket. Now I'm sitting in the pocket so well. Now they want me to be a little bit more of an athlete. And that's an example of what he's trying to do for him this year. Take a breath. Four touchdowns in the first quarter. We'll be back after this message. Get a word from your local ABC station. In South Carolina, we start the second quarter. Georgia 14, Clemson 14, third down and 10. They must reach Clemson's 39 yard line for a first down. Murray fires far side, got the first down. Puts it into Wooten's hands on the far side. And, and they'll move the chain. You got a rhythmic quarterback and you give him a soft cushion. That doesn't make a lot of sense on third down. Murray gets in the shotgun. He takes a couple steps back. No, no press at all. Wooten didn't have to work to get off the line of scrimmage. He gets to where he needs to go for the first down, turns around, and a veteran quarterback puts the ball right in the money. Ball spotted at the 36-yard line, and 
Marshall hit in the backfield by Wiggins. Wiggins with it. It's a terrific upside here at Clemson. The coach is talking about it. He's one of the youngins. A true freshman, and that play just took too long in developing. And with a blitz on there from Wiggins, all right, by the time Marshall had the football, he's getting hit by the freshman. Soft coverage again. Second down and 10, and Marshall stopped in the hole by Suey, Spencer Suey, the linebacker. And it's going to be another third down and long coming up for Murray. Let's, let's see the coverage here. Remember the last time on third down, they had two receivers to the left. Looks like there'll be two receivers to the right. And you've got that push in there. Again, with, with Aaron Murray, it's a rhythmic quarterback. If you don't challenge the receivers off the ball, it's going to make it easy. Now they're going to try to make an adjustment, it looks like. Must reach the 26-yard line here. Moving hard to the right, back across his body for the first down, plus diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Wooten, the freshman, with a sensational dive for the pylon and the 34-yard score. Take a look at this. Great effort here by Wooten. We'll see if he extends before he goes down. The might have left been out hand. Of yeah, that left hand may have touched out of bounds. How about Aaron Murray? Penetration by Grady Jarrett. How do you get better in your fourth year? You keep trying to grow. Yeah, he's out of bounds before the ball extended. Being reviewed upstairs, so the play has been stopped before the extra point alignment is out on the field for Georgia. But, of course, it'll be first and goal down around the one-yard line. So that's the worst thing that can happen here to the Bulldogs. Remember that. And if this goes against them, it's not all that bad when no. you've got 220-pound Keith Marshall ready to go. Remember, this drive started back on the three-yard line. So they are knocking on the door right now. Remember that big run by the fullback Hicks. And that came on first down, and that really bailed them out. Sure did. They're pinned inside the five-yard line. Great effort by Wooten, but Aaron Murray told us this week that he wanted to try to keep plays alive. Watch Jarrett in the middle, beats his man, gets through, and there's Murray trying to keep a play alive. In the past, he may have given up on that, maybe thrown the ball away. This time, he uses athletic ability to keep it alive, makes the defense get out of position, and then he... By keeping it alive, Wooten is able to find a hole in coverage and eventually pick up big yards. After further review, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball breaking the play on the goal line. The ball is placed just inside the one-yard line, first and goal. The game clock will start on the ready-for-play signal. And the youngster over on the sideline table over there getting a little additional tape. One of those nights. The fullback, and why not? He bailed him out. So Hicks barges into the end zone, and that, folks, finishes off. A 97-yard drive. And you're right, how fitting. The big run to get him out of that difficult position inside their five-yard line and let the big fella finish it off. Started it with Herbie with that 37-yarder. He's known to be a blocker. I think Mike Bobo just gave him a dive just to kind of say, hey, we really appreciate your effort opening up these holes for these great backs. Here, here's the ball once. It was 37 yards. So Belis tacks on his third extra point of the night. This, of course, setting it up as Wooten dives to the one. And then the young man from Blackshear, Georgia, 257, and he delivers a powerful punt. Georgia's first lead of the night. 
21 14 over Clemson and they will kick it off back deep the two burners Watkins and Bryant this will be Bryant Bryant from the four Bryant was in the doghouse but he clearly is out of it tonight as we take a look at our Pacific life game summary Herbie it's been a game where we kind of expected to come in and see a lot of offense and, and we saw that the thing that's impressed me probably the most is Georgia on the road down seven answered down 14 to seven answered and now they've worked themselves into a lead on the road here 21 to 14 showing a lot of composure Last time we, I'm sorry, Brent. Last time we saw them, they got down. They kind of folded up against South Carolina. So McDowell, Herbie, who's rushed for 38 yards, comes back in. And he gets the first call into the middle of that defense. And Clemson, for sure, has not gotten rid of the running game here tonight. Um, in fact, they are committed to it. They like to brag that even though we get talked about as a spread team, we, we still want to hit you in the mouth and, and be a, a powerful running team. Play action, beautiful fake, and they throw it to Daryl Smith. And the fullback slash tight end carries it out toward that first down marker. You got to respect the potential handoff there. And then they slip the tight end out. You know, you're thinking about maybe the zone replay where he gives to McDowell, pulls and runs. And so, you know, you got to be concerned about the tight end out the flat. They always try to keep you guessing. It will be third and short. Boyd keeps it for the first down. To the 35-yard line, and the chains will move. Keep in mind, if you're watching this offense, it's not just the tempo. You get a lot of window dressing, a lot of different formations, a lot of personnel groupings, a lot of shifts from the tight ends, motions from the receivers. By doing that, they're trying to trick the eyes of these young defensive backs and linebackers from Georgia, trying to make them hesitate just enough for a big play. First down and 10. We saw a shot of Chad Morris over there. He's one of the highest paid assistant coaches in football. As Texas Tech and North Carolina State came calling at the end of last year, he now makes 1.3 million. And Urban Meyer also dialed up Chad to see uh, what do you think about Columbus? And Chad telling us it'll take a special situation to ever leave Clemson. He and his family are very happy. Downfield, long throw and in. Complete, but a penalty flag against Young Matthews. Brent Trey Matthews, the true freshman safety, stayed in position, but what he's going to learn, he's a young defensive back, is he never found the football. He's back. They're trying to trick him, but you see his head? He doesn't even attempt to locate the football. So when a referee sees you not even attempting to find the football and there's a little bit of contact, it's going to be a flag. Would have been costly, real costly, in the National Football League in a college game. 15-yard penalty, so they'll bring the ball across midfield. And it will be first and 10 with Zach Brooks, the sophomore from Jonesboro, Arkansas, checking into that backfield. Taj fires, and he was behind his receiver a little bit that time. Adam Humphreys, usually very reliable, a go-to guy for Taj, but threw the ball behind him. Georgia doing their best to rotate bodies in and out of this defensive lineup. And they are doing a good job. There's a lot of depth. Todd Grantham, every chance he gets, trying to get another body in there. Boyd under pressure. And he is cut off. So he saw the middle, but Ray Drew saw it too, and he brings the Clemson quarterback down. It brought Rameek Wilson on a linebacker blitz. And Taj Boyd's awareness allowed him to at least step up in the pocket, but that was really good pursuit by the dog's defense. And another dog defender is down, and that is Jordan Jenkins. So Todd Gurley pedaling away on a bicycle. Malcolm Mitchell declared out, and now another of their fine veterans shaken up.
of course, the, deep, the crowd here again booing with his third down coming up. You know, when you think about Mark Rick's defense and what they lost with those eight starters, there are some very, very important numbers. 65% of their tackles, 70% of the tackles for a loss, and 71% of the sacks have moved on, either to the National Football League or graduated away from college football. And the young man in the red probably accounted for <laughs> Quite a few percentage points there, Jarvis Jones. So McDowell is back in. Here's third and nine, and Georgia keeping Taj in that third and long. Fires it, caught, dropped as he goes out of bounds, and incomplete. It looked like a completion to Peak, and he couldn't hang on long enough in the eyes of the official yeah yep. very good move by the defender and that's Herrera watch Herrera here oh does he knock the ball out great job by Clemson's offensive line of protecting boy gave him a chance to, to make that throw but Herrera never gave up on the play and that right hand punched the ball loose from peak Damian Swan back deep gonna let this one go and it will be down just inside the 15 yard line. We're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Windows. Brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments. Choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. South Carolina Botanical Garden, 295 beautiful acres right here in South Carolina. Meanwhile, for Georgia fans, real good news as Todd Gurley, who was pedaling away with that little hip problem that he had, is back on the field, and Georgia has been unstoppable on their last three possessions. So here is Gurley. And Hicks has delivered the hammer. He is the fullback, number 48. So we want to keep an eye on him. And I see that Colton Houston is out there, number 75. And what a story that young man is. Gurley picks his way for a few yards. I want to go back to Colton Houston. He's number 75. Folks, this is the first time that he's been able to play, and what a story. He's been out for three years because he could not clear a steroid drug from his system, which he inadvertently took on a recommendation of a doctor. It has been that long, and here he is, a young man who's going to graduate in May, and he's seeing his first action, and that is special tonight. Early behind the middle of that line, and uh, Clemson playing with a little more verb. There is a flag on the play. They have a one yard on the play, third and five. So let's check in down below with Heather. Brent, you are talking about Colton Houston and his battle. It started with a steroid injection, like you said, following shoulder surgery before he enrolled at Georgia. Personal the foul. problem, as we hear the official call the personal foul, was that the steroid stuck in his system. It didn't dissipate, so he kept having positive drug tests. So Houston tried everything, aggressive massage, sweat therapy, even surgery, where they removed that tissue where the drug seemed to be concentrated. And finally, after three long years, he succeeded with that clean drug test and has been cleared to play and guys he looked like a kid on Christmas morning during pregame just a huge grin on his face tons of emotion for Kelton Houston and the coaches had to say he's very athletic too they're not just being nice to the big fella they say he's a player played some guard and now he's over there at right tackle Murray steps back and puts it in Jay Rome's hands Jay Rome one of the tight ends hit by Suey. Jay Rome's daddy was a tremendous two-sport athlete here at Clemson. He played football and basketball. Drafted in both the NFL and the NBA. So 87 makes his presence felt. So here we come to third and five for Murray. Remember, they haven't been stopped in their last three drives. Curley stays in the backfield. Hit and sacked. 
blind side coming at him was Vic Beasley. Brent, it's a whiff by Canarius Gates, the left tackle, 72. He just misses the speedster Beasley. Watch how quick Beasley is. Quickness, but that is a poor effort by the left tackle Gates. He went right around him, used that acceleration, and there's a great job in coverage that time by Gary Peters locking up Michael Bennett, not allowing Aaron Murray to get the ball to his favorite target on third down. And this could be good news for Clemson because Watkins is back to return this punt. Signals for the fair catch, however, a beautiful punt. Good hang time, and Clemson will put it in play on their 45-yard line, trailing 21-14 when you come back to South Carolina. There are athletes galore on this field, and as a result, 22 NFL scouts are in attendance. That is a Clemson record. They have never had 22 NFL scouts at one football game, but they are here tonight. And Roderick McDowell, he is already graduated. He's out of Sumter, South Carolina. What a story he is, Herbie. He was born with a club foot. That's right. His right foot is a half size smaller. And it was corrected as a youngster with surgery. And now that has become his strong leg. And he'll tell you when he cuts, he loves to cut off of that right foot would work just fine right now. See Sammy Watkins isolated to the bottom of the screen against Swan. Nice Boyd flushed out of the pocket again on the move. And when he comes to the left, he's not nearly as accurate as when he's forced over to his throwing side. That was noticeable, Herb, when we looked at that tape against LSU. Something that he's really worked hard on just to become a, a complete quarterback. I love the awareness. The Georgia defense there started with a safety protecting the corner swan as he started his, his cadence, and then he moved to the middle of the field, and then he made a check there to try to get that isolation with his best receiver, Sammy Watkins. Back in that third down situation again. Almost intercepted. Herrera couldn't hang on. That is a great job by Herrera feeling the route, anticipating third and short. He's lined up in the region with Sammy Watkins. He knows he wants to get the ball. Look at him undercut that and anticipate the short throw to Watkins. Great job that time by Herrera. He just he was unable to hold on to the football and secure it. But a great read. McGowan goes back deep to receive this punt for Georgia. Fair catch at the 19-yard line, and that's where Murray and the Dogs will have it leading Clemson. 21-14 on a muggy night in the Southeast. Well, there you see the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. It'll be awarded to the winner of the Vizio BCS National Championship on January 16th in Pasadena. Out at the Rose Bowl, the BCS era comes to an end, and next year, of course, the four-team playoff for the national championship. So here we go. First down and 10, Georgia leading Clemson, 21-14. Todd Gurley in that backfield. Aaron Murray wants to set the screen. Deflected, incomplete. Beasley had a shot at it. Tried to catch it up in the air. They brought Quandon Christian also 34 off the edge there. He actually gets in free and gets a hand up. And good awareness there by Beasley. You're right, Brent. I thought he may have been able to get that football. You could see him find it. Comes up with that ball somehow. He walks into the end zone for a big pick six. Keith Marshall checks in. And second and ten, nothing doing. You know, ever since the three consecutive scoring drives, Herbie, Brent Venable's defense has played with a lot more passion on that last series and here. So Venables had to fire him up after he gave up three scores in a row. And I think one of the things he's doing is, <laughs> look at his intensity. He was that way in Norman and he's that way here in Clemson. He's attacking more. He's taking a few more chances with some of these linebackers and corners and putting a little bit more pressure 
on the offensive line of Georgia. Third down and long for Murray. They are three of six on third downs against the Clemson D. Fumble ball on the ground. Tug of war underneath. Clemson player has it. A turnover on the sack by the quarterback. Brent, you just talked about Brent Venables, and we talked about the pressure, and he saves it for third down, disguising pressure. Look at the movement from the orange jerseys. Travis Blanks comes up off to the left there. Looks like he's bringing pressure, and at the last second, he's able to drop back, and then they bring Stephon Anthony along with Huey. They get in there to get pressure and knock the ball out. Linebackers on just a kind of a, a cross blitz there, but confusion up front was the key. Again, attacking Georgia's offense the line. Spencer Suri, he was Johnny on the spot, wasn't he? McDowell will be the running back. Looking for the tying touchdown. They'll start in the red zone. Ties Boyd. Takes it down to the 10-yard line. The second down. A very dangerous runner down here yeah. in the red zone. And a lot of the NFL scouts that we mentioned, they're keeping a very close eye on Taj Boyd. He has reminded some of Russell Wilson with his escape ability and his arm. He did not project as a first rounder last year, so he came back for the final season and hands it off. First down. It'll be first and goal. This great vision this time by our guy McDowell. He's worked hard tonight. Watch this jump cut. A little bit of penetration, the vision, the jump cut. And then the acceleration and power to be able to pick up that first down. Taj looking for the seam. It'll be second down and goal. Wrestled down at the two-yard line. And coming up, a reminder to stay tuned for the Capital One Halftime Report. Scores and highlights from around a busy opening Saturday of the college football season in the opening weekend, let me hand out congratulations to the North Dakota State Bisons. They go into Manhattan, Kansas, and beat Kansas State. What a great job by that team. Second down and goal now. Ty's keeping this one all the way, and Georgia is ready for it. And that's going to bring up a third and goal. That is a great job by Jordan Jenkins, who went down earlier with an injury. He's back out there. And he set the edge on that defense and pushed that left tackle back into the backfield. You wonder now what offensive coordinator Chad Morris will whistle up on third and goal. Mark Rick is out on the field. He wants a timeout. Well, tonight's Aflac trivia question. I give you a good I chance. No idea. Idea. We start a new season. Here it Come is. Come on, be, be, be nice. Okay, Affleck, be nice to Herbie. Here we go. So, what former Georgia player holds the school record for most passes thrown in one bowl game and most passes caught in another bowl game? Most passes thrown in one bowl game and most caught in a second. The answer now? Yes, because I don't want you getting texts. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get <laughs> I see you. All right, we'll wait. Yeah, Herbie, give me, we'll just give a, you a little time. Give me just. Yeah, I, uh, give me a yeah. second. I'll call the truck. I know off. I can eliminate David Green and Eric Sire. I mean, we <laughs> work from there. We go from there. <laughs> There's Mitchell, heading back to the locker room. All boys of Georgia fans are saying, "Come on, Herbie, you can get this one." I've got to get I'll this one. I tell you, there, there's some Georgia fans right down in Atlanta saying, "Come on, Herbie, you got this one." Thank you. So here we go now. Third down and goal. Oh, my gosh. That, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and they're saying, I, got, I, got, I, know, I know you're going to get yeah. this one. I know. Okay. Third down and goal now. Motion. Taj looking to throw. Daylight runs. Bangs toward the end zone. And the touchdown. Battles his way in. Well, that Slow developing. He, he reaches across, and it's going to be another one. They might take a peek out to see if the knee touched before he gets the ball across the plane. 
Now he breaks it right there. That's a touchdown. And his second rushing touchdown of this game. His he also threw one to Watkins. His mobility down in that area. You have to be so concerned about all those receivers and running McDowell. And that was a slow developing play. And he just kind of weaved his way through following some blocks. Cut back. Found that crease and into the end zone. So it was a turnover, remember, that set up the touchdown. And, and look how slow developing this is. I mean, almost like he's thinking about maybe throwing the ball to, to the tight end. Let's check in for an update, and here's Robert Flores. Hey, Brent, give another win to an FCS team. Our Taco Bell Live Moss moment, Vernon Adams of Eastern Washington. Six total touchdowns as they beat number 25, Oregon State, 49 to 46 on the road. Brent. Oh, my goodness. A big night for the big sky. Wow, Eastern Washington. All right, Herbie. I know you've had a chance to think about it. What former Georgia player holds the record now for the most passes thrown in one bowl game and most caught in another game? Okay. Yeah. Are you still I got thinking? It. Yeah, I got Are you it. sure you're right? I got it. Yeah. I'm fine. I just right. thought about I, I forgot that he did, they, they had and so many injuries one year that he had to play quarterback. Okay. After he whistles this one into the end zone. Four number 19. How about that? You're all over. Next level. You're all over. I'm going next level on you. Okay. Here it is. Coming in. So go ahead, Harvey. Give everybody Hines the answer. Ward, Absolutely. The great Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. It was indeed. Now, the Aflac trivia answer is indeed high. Now, look at this, folks. He threw 59 passes at the 95 Jeez. Beach Bowl, and he caught 12 a couple years later. There is our guy, Bulldog, Steeler. And, oh, by the way, he won Dancing with the Star. Man had some good moves. He's doing a fine job there. This was Kim Johnson. I'm impressed. I am very. Wow. Not only do I get high <laughs> score 19, but I drop a Kim Johnson on you. All right, here we go. <laughs> Todd Gurley's back in the game. It's all deadlocked at 21. First down and 10 for the dog. Gurley is cut off and going nowhere. Swarmed all over it. Brady Jarrett, who was shaken up early, he got him first. Great penetration. Jarrett does a nice job. Also, Carlos Watkins, 94, sophomore, getting in there, getting involved. We've seen these last three series. Clemson attacking, getting on. after this Georgia offensive line. Brady Jarrett is a son of a dandy. Jesse Tuggle is his natural father. And guess who he calls uncle, folks? Ray Lewis. Man, he has had a couple of great tutors. And nothing doing again for Curry. Well, Spencer Shuey is very, very active as well. 33, came up with that fumble recovery. Terrific effort last year for this defense has instincts and they got Murray again in a third and long situation. They've been able to dial up pressure the last two third down and long situations. Also coverage is tightened up on the outside. Marshall a good receiver has checked into the backfield. Murray looks the other way and it's incomplete. So the dogs are forced to punt again after Brent Venables and the defense make adjustments following three consecutive touchdowns. Done a good job on first and second down to get them to third and long. And look at that. I don't care how many games you've played. It's his 42nd career start. That kind of penetration. You got a defense that's essentially pinning its ears back and showing a lot of looks and confusing Georgia's offensive line. Sammy Watkins is back deep again. Forced the signal for fumbles the fair catch signal. Dogs jump for it. Oh, Justin Scott. The dogs Wesley say they've got there. it. We haven't got an official response yet. Receiver Scott Wesley is at the bottom of that pile for Georgia, 86. Yes, indeed, they do have it. Scott Wesley, who's been very active as a 
receiver here tonight. He comes up with the fumble. Botched the fair catch. This is going to be one of those games where, it, you know, who's going to make a mistake? Who's going to make a crucial mistake to give the other offense a short field? And as good as Clemson's played these last few series, this mistake by Watkins is a huge opportunity for Aaron Murray and the Bulldogs to try to recapture some momentum in this football game tied up right now. Final 221 of the opening half. Marshall into the Georgia backfield. Play action. Intercepted at the 17-yard line. Crawford. And Crawford running like a defensive back. I believe there's a penalty flag also on that far side. So Corey Crawford, the junior defensive lineman, from Columbus, Georgia, drops into coverage and makes the interception. Murray did not read it. Following the interception and during the return, personal foul, blocking below the waist, number 27 of the intercepting team. 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down, Clemson. Brent, I think the reason Murray's confused is Stephon Anthony, the middle linebacker, has walked up right here and blitzing. Over here is Crawford, and he's going to drop back into coverage, and that's who Aaron Murray doesn't see. See him dropping back right here. He's sinking. Murray does not see him. He's thinking he's got his tight end clearing open. Throws it right into the hands of the defensive end. So zone pressure from Brent Middables on first and 10. Who would ever think a 270-pound defensive end would drop back into coverage? So there is the penalty flag as Gates was being cut down and now play action McDowell and Taj Boyd dances away out to the 24 yard line the votes are in and the fans have deemed this the blimp worthy game of the week so aerial coverage provided by Goodyear tonight from Clemson South Carolina where there's superior performance Goodyear is there Goodyear more driven Taj Boyd back in the pocket. Fires and it is incomplete. And Bryant has been shut out here tonight. And it appeared as though he had a good shot at hanging on to that one. He's got to make that play. I mean, it, he, he is a, a young man that has as much physical ability as any receiver that they have. He's got to hold on to that football. So it's third down and six. Dog show blitz and false start. Bryant moves. Bryant moves now. Bryant. Offense, number one. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Trying to fill some huge shoes. DeAndre Hopkins who became Taj Boyd's go-to receiver. There he is. He's now a member of the Houston Texans. He was drafted late in the first round, suffering a little bit of concussion problem right now. So that Monday night game at San Diego on ESPN, he remains a question mark. But against LSU, he caught 13 passes that night. And oh, how Taj wishes he could throw to Hopkins again here tonight. Forced to take off, and he is rustled down short of the first down. And Mark Rick's gonna use his second timeout Get the ball back here with one timeout. Trying to get some points on the board before they get to the half. Well, you know, if you if you go back to DeAndre and that bowl win over LSU, they had a fourth and 16. Brandon Ford actually called this play. Here's the all 22. Now watch the tight end as he crosses and draws coverage. And in the middle, now watch DeAndre as he circles and cuts it off to keep the safety back. And that, the coach has told us, Brandon Ford, the tight end, called the play on the sideline. He said, I think the defensive back will follow me to the sideline, and the safety will freeze back there because he won't be too sure if it's going to be me or DeAndre. What a play that yeah, was. That was huge and gave them a chance for that game-winning field goal. Great throw also by Taj Boyd. You know, going back to Martavius Bryant, just another mental layer there and that's something he's been trying to overcome 
He's got the physical ability, but if he wants to try to replace Luke Hopkins, he can't be making mental mistakes for this Clemson offense. So the dogs are out of timeouts. Doesn't mean as much in the college game as it does in the NFL. Fair catch by McGowan at the 34 yard line, 123 to work with. Tomorrow night, ESPN2 has a special Labor Day weekend edition of Sunday Night Baseball. The Mets and the Nationals try to keep their wild card hopes alive when they meet a Washington Mets Nationals tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. By my reckoning, the Braves and the Dodgers are in. And it's going to be two of three. Cardinals, Pirates, and Reds. Would you agree with that for the National League playoff? Well, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan, so I'm holding on, hoping that the Reds can overcome the Cardinals and the Pirates and try to secure that division. I don't want for one game playoff to try to get to the postseason. The playoffs could be special in the National League if those teams get in. And Marshall bang down at that 40 yard line. So here's the difference, Herbie, with the uh, last few drives, huh? And it's amazing to think they had three straight uh, scoring drives, and now they have three straight uh, drives where Clemson's turned it up. Now Clemson, because of the urgency of this drive, you want, can, can Clemson maintain their energy and what they're trying to do? J.J. Green, a freshman, checks in as the running back. Sliding catch by Bennett. They're out of timeouts, and they've got a quarterback that's done this a lot in college. Very comfortable with trying to get his team at least into field goal range here. Sacked again. They, they, they just were struggling with the speed off of the edge. This time, Tavares Barnes comes off the same edge that Vic Beasley had. They have moved your guy, Brent Colton Houston, from the right side to the left side. And he's on that left side. It's a little bit of a different game with the speed off the edge between Barnes and Vic Beasley. Well, I think the dogs are content on the dogs to take it <laughs> into the locker room, deadlocked at 21. 42 points here in the first half. Good finish here. So you'll be coming on back for the second half of this one. Number five, Georgia against number eight, Clemson. Let's go down to Heather Cox. Thanks so much, Mark. After three early touchdowns, your offense hasn't seemed quite as productive. How do you get that early momentum back in the second half? Well, we got to run the ball better, but they've been uh, bringing some people in the box to stop it. We got we got to be ready to throw it in that case, but then when we do throw it, we got to be able to protect off the edge. And your defense came in with some unknowns. How would you assess their performance in the first half? Not bad, not bad, considering the one touchdown we gave to the ball deep in the territory. I think the boys have done pretty good. And Malcolm Mitchell is out. Gurley did come back. How can you use him in the second half? Well, Gurley's in there, but he's hobbled, it looks like to me. Thanks, Mark. So there you have the latest news, and we don't know how much we'll see of Gurley in the second half as we come to the end of the first here at Clemson. So stay tuned after these messages with the Capital One Halftime Report. Twenty-one apiece, cats and dogs in this sea of orange here. A tremendous atmosphere that makes you realize why it's worth wading through these troubling off seasons. The off seasons are long, filled with hot air. That these assumptions we have become strong assertions. You go into watching these opening games, thinking those assertions are going to be confirmed. Then you watch your round of games like today, and you come out knowing less than you thought you did going in. Alabama was supposed to have this explosive big play offense. A.J. McCarron, his best group of receivers ever. We were going to miss all those studs on the offensive line who left. Guess what? Alabama missed them. The offensive line was pretty poor. The offense pretty anemic. Keep in mind, though, the Hokies might be the second best or perhaps the best defense they see all season. Oklahoma State was supposed to beat Mississippi State with tempo and high scoring offense. Instead, they won with defense, grinding it out more yards on the ground than they had through the air. It was a tremendous opening Saturday for those directional schools, humbling for some big name programs. And oh, by the way, here's one assumption you've been correct. If Johnny Manziel was going to come back chastened, he was going to come coming up 21 21. Georgia and Clemson back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Windows.
presentation of the ACC on ESPN. 42 points and over 500 yards of offense in this game so far. Georgia 21, Clemson 21. But Herbie, we cannot forget about the defense, especially Clemson here. Boy, Clemson's dialed it up the last five series. They've really put a lot of pressure, I think, on the offensive line of Georgia getting after Murray. They have three sacks in that first half. And it, I think Georgia's got to get back to being able to run the football. Now we're going to have to look at Gurley and Marshall, check their status in the second half. And on the other side of the ball, I think it's really about Todd Boyd relying on somebody besides Sammy Watkins. Who in this second half can make a play to take some of the pressure off of Boyd and what he's trying to do? On a muggy night in Clemson, South Carolina, more than 84,000. And Georgia will handle the ball. Remember, they lost Malcolm Mitchell early in this game. But now, a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Herbie, let's compare the two quarterbacks. Yeah, we came in anticipating big numbers, and we got on a little bit of a roll there where they had some possessions and some points. And it's an idea of minus nine three sacks for Aaron Murray he's not had a whole lot of help and ever since both his backs got dinged especially Gurley they have not been able to do the same thing in establishing that run game and it's put a lot on his shoulders this game's a long way from being over it kind of has the feel that which of these quarterbacks has the ball last could win it Taj Boyd had only one completion in the second quarter first down and ten now and Keith Marshall is the Georgia running back. And you got to keep an eye on Hicks, that big fullback. Needs to play a game to start the half here for Murray. Wow. Play a game. Offense. Let's check in down below with Heather. Dabo Sweeney agreed with what Kirk Herbstreit just said, that the key has been defense. They really settled down, especially those last four possessions, by putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. What Coach Sweeney wasn't happy with was offensive execution, especially the passing game. He said, Josh Boyd and our receivers just aren't in rhythm. That's certainly something we talked about at halftime. I like the passing game, but we're not sustaining. We like the running game, but we're not sustaining our drives because of the passing game. All right, Heather. And Bennett was the target, but there was a penalty flag and throwing Grady. back around the quarterback, and uh, Grady was Grady trying Jared's to close in. Yeah, they, they had to hold him to keep him away from Murray. He is just having his way, pushing this Georgia offensive line back. I, I think Georgia's offensive line right now, I think they're a bit rattled. Talk about quarterbacks being rattled. I think Georgia's offensive line, these last five series, the fight's been one on the other side of the ball. Those orange jerseys right now are just pushing Georgia back into Aaron Murray. So Gates is back at left tackle, but the youngster Houston is at right tackle. And they cannot open up that hole for Marshall. This is going to be a second down and long coming up. Hey, imagine running the football. We're talking about pass protection, but you know, here, here's the back. Where's the crease? Great gap integrity. You always hear Brent Venables talk about that. He's got a defense right now playing with a ton of confidence. And it's, again, in attack mode right now. He's playing with a lot of intensity. Four receivers, and Arthur Lynch has been real quiet for the dogs here tonight. Murray going to be sacked at the one-yard line. And Vic Beasley, who has had a monster of a night, is all over him. This offensive line is a veteran group, believe it or not. Look up to the right there. Corey Crawford also gets off the edge and beats his man, Houston. Both of those two defensive ends are just studying that football. And when that football moves, they're in, again, kind of attack mode. Beasley on one side. Crawford, we've seen Tavares Barnes as well. Now it's third and long. Here comes the run. That's the fourth sack of the game. And Marshall will be ridden down. Georgia will punt it away here after the first series of the second half. That is the sixth series in a row that Aaron Murray and the Dogs go to the sidelines. That's after scoring on three straight possessions to get 21 points. And Adam Humphreys back to return this punt, Brent. He's a very sure-handed receiver. And remember, Watkins popped one up on the fair catch. That was one of the Clemson turnovers. This should give them very good field position. He signals for the fair catch at the Clemson 44-yard line. 
And that's where Taj Boyd and the Tigers will put it in play. With an injury, and Herbie, I'll tell you who's having a great night besides Clemson, and that is South Carolina and Coach Steve Spurrier. The dogs are being beaten up in this neighborhood battle, and they've got to go home to Athens and regroup no matter what happens the rest of this way and take on South Carolina as the ball is incomplete and Peak was the intended target that time. But yeah. there's South Carolina having played North Carolina and beaten them on Thursday night. Jadavian Clowney has got to be sitting in his room with his feet up saying, yeah, a couple extra days of rest. Or he should be out on the treadmill or out on to run some gasters, try to get in shape, get ready for that game. I ain't buying that. I ain't Carolina. buying it. I ain't buying it. Second down and ten. There's the swing. <laughs> By daylight. And that was McDowell. What a fine run as he crushed across that first down marker. Tough hombre. Yeah, get, get, get your back outside and let him make a play. The defensive end, Garrison Smith, can't hang with him, but how about the move and the shake on Josh Dawson? The outside linebacker, 255 pounds, no chance. First down, slips it back to Peak again. So instead of looking for Bryant, they are now finding Peak here in the second half. And, and Brent, we saw them earlier get on a pretty good drive where they went nine plays and it was this it was quick throws to the perimeter and then run the ball up the middle with McDowell make put, really put stress on the linebackers outside quick up the middle with McDowell DJ Howard is the running back and he'll get the handoff and he's going nowhere hit by the middle of that defensive line hurry I'm gonna call all you guys out that came down on Clowney I, you understand how hot it is here in South Carolina we're still in August and it, it, we've seen guys lifting off both sides of yeah. his field getting down. No, you think he's out of shape? No, I don't think he's out of shape. I just worry about reading his press clippings and worry about getting hurt, avoiding to get hurt. Mm -hmm. I think when you try to, to not get hurt because you're going to be the first pick, you end up not playing as effectively as you can. Third down and four. Snaps it off. And that fullback slash tight end. He could not pick it up that time. Daryl Smith, he defied it out against in Alabama. And, and this is what you're talking about, Brent. This offense, they've had some, some pretty good tight ends the last four or five years. And right now with the entry to Leggett, they just don't have that Smith with a good effort here. Fourth down and short. Here we go. Ties Boyd, dangerous. Snaps it off quickly. And Peak, second effort, got the first down. Peak was going to be thrown for a loss. But he broke free of freshman Trey Matthews' grasp and picked up the first down. There's a learning moment for the freshman. And you knew it, and I knew it, and Matthews knew it. Everybody knew that they're going to get the ball out in a hurry. Great effort by Peak, and the true freshman that time, Matthews, if he secures that tackle, Brent, as you said, they get the ball back and get the ball back to Aaron Murray. So first down, Reed Webster, fresh offensive lineman dashes into the floor as Ryan Norton was hurt. So Webster is forced to snap that ball back to Taj. Perfect. Taj downfield. Caught. Touchdown. Zach Brooks. I don't know what was more impressive. The throw by Taj Boyd or the snap by 77. Snap. Reed Webster. Come on into this tempo offense. 77. Huh? What? 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 Shoot. Right to Boyd. Perfect. And what a great touch pass that time by Taj Boyd. He just put a wheel route where they slipped him right out of the backfield. I'm going to take a second look at it upstairs. And Troy, so whoever you take one. Well, here's Brooks, and he's just going to slip down out of the backfield and gets matched up with Connor Norman, number 11, who cannot stay with him in his speed. And that ball is perfectly thrown right over the shoulder to the running back, Brooks. You know, he's known as a power back. He looks close now. It is close. He'll be very close. We'll leave this one up to instant replay. ACC crew. He might have been down, but we'll see. I don't know. Tough to tell the football. The ball's coming at you. The football was it's just kind of when that knee touched. But I'm impressed yeah. as a power back. You go on a wheel route, make a pretty good catch there. Got matched up one on one with Connor Norman, who doesn't yeah. have the greatest speed in that secondary. But again, we saw a call like this in the first half, and 
worst things could happen at Clemson is first and goal from right around the one yard line. That's the very worst that could happen in this situation. I, happened earlier with, to Georgia. With the angles that we've seen, it's hard to imagine that they turn that one over. Depth at that running back spot. Kevin Zaro tacks on the extra point, and the Tigers lead it again. And we said, who might take the pressure off of Sammy Watkins? We saw him get the ball to the outside to peak a couple times, and here they slide Zach Brooks out of the backfield on a wheel route. Perfectly thrown ball there by Todd Boyd for the touchdown. Football on ABC, presented by Windows. Brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching back to Buick. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. There is the greatest mascot in college football. Okay. Started back in 1956. Sunny Silent. Savannah, Georgia. An English Bulldog in the first home game of the season. Oh, come on, Uga. This was, hey, he's got his own fan. Look at that fan. He's got the fan. He's got the ice bag. He'll come out. He comes outside. He gets on the ice bag. Oh, you can't be. <laughs> out of the end zone. And let's, how about this Clemson defense all of a sudden? They have all of a sudden dialed up the pressure. You've said it for the last six series. They're winning the battle up front. They're getting a lot of pressure. There's Anthony on the blitz, but really it's about what they're doing on the edge with Crawford on one side and Beasley on the other. This time they just rushed four. You'd think with a veteran line you're okay. Good, good coverage downfield, and again, that pocket closes in on Aaron Murray. Six straight series. That came after three consecutive scoring drives. Unbelievable. Remember, Georgia's been down, and every time they've been down, they've answered to tie the game up. Marshall flares, and there's his first reception. And the big fella motors for about eight yards. Anthony has been very active over with the shot, but I think you could see, even though he's a little bit gimpy, he has great hands. Yeah, and nice catch. I think you and I are seeing the same thing. Justin Scott Wesley, 86, is really growing up tonight as a wide receiver, the sophomore. And with the injury to Mitchell, he's going to have to. He's had a big night so far. No feeding it. And nothing doing. This will be third and short. And that was Sui, number 33, who stepped in there first, the linebacker. Not getting much of a push at all. And you've got eight or nine orange jerseys attacking that line of scrimmage this third and short is not a given against this Clemson defense the way they're attacking Todd Gurley checks back in tight formation and he he very good at it. it's <laughs> looking like he's short what a job by the middle of Brent Venables defensive line against Mark Rick's quarterback the exact description that Brent Venables told us is our defensive line has to be violent. We've got to be the aggressor. We've got to be disruptive. <laughs> you think he's pretty happy with these last seven series in his defense? It's exactly what he's seen. Fourth down and one, and again, Adam Humphreys will go back deep. the sure hands back there and it's a fake for the first down remember they ran a huge fake punt against Alabama in the SEC championship when they threw a pass Arthur Lynch the tight end completed this time they run for the first down on the fake punt how about that gutsy call from Mark Rick and maybe something that could spark Georgia that's the Bobby Bowden coming out in him right there gutsy call in his own territory Rick was right here on that Florida State staff when Bobby Bowden whistled up. 
that great fake punt. And Florida State went on to beat a real good Clemson team. So Colin Barber runs for the first down. Gurley's back in. And let's see if this sparks the dog. Snaps off a completion. And there's Bennett, Michael Bennett. A go-to guy, real sure-handed receiver. And I think this is the answer to the Brett, the pressure. See the linebacker coming? It, when, you, when you bring that linebacker, you better get in there in a hurry. Good job by Mike Bobo getting Murray back. Get the ball out of his hands fast against that pressure. And they attack right where the linebacker was on the quick slant there by Bennett. The dogs at midfield. Play action, Murray. Throwing. And there's the big fullback, Hicks. Look out, he's a load. Rip the ball free. And a dog jumped on it. That ball was coming free as the fullback was being tackled. And it was taken two to wrestle him down. And Conley hopped on the ball. Quick slant. And now they come out with misdirection. And they get the ball out to Hicks. And he's known as a blocker. But we've seen him run the football. He also can catch the ball. Nice job. The ball comes out. But Georgia gets on top of it. So it is a first down inside the 15 for Georgia. Trailing it by seven. Runs into his fullback. Slowed the play up and Gurley breaks free for the end zone. Touchdown! Aaron Murray bumps into Hicks. It wasn't the best execution, but Gurley shows some determination here. He also runs into Hicks. Hicks hits the quarterback. He doesn't care who he hits. The opposing team, the quarterback, he hits Todd Gurley. He still can't stop Gurley from finding a way to sneak through that Clemson defense. So that fake punt sets up that scoring opportunity. And Hicks kept on going for being cleared Christian out of the play that time. And the extra point tacked on by Vilas, who's handling the kicking. And I break the assist there. Watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. The college football bus is here. And a reminder the tailgate we fired up by Kingsford Charcoal is coming on October 5th. 56 points. Deadlocked at 28 with 7.41 to go in the third quarter. So the Georgia football team had a very impressive guest come speak to them earlier in the week. And let's watch his kickoff and then we'll get to that. Todd Gurley over there on the dog sideline. Two races left until the chase for the Cup. Jimmy Johnson looks to maintain his lead on the field as NASCAR's best roll into the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Don't miss the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, on ESPN. And indeed, it was one of the all-time breaks. Jeff Gordon dropped on by. There he is with the quarterback. Spoke to the team about determination and dedication. One of the great NASCAR drivers of all time. So he visited the team earlier in the week. McDowell is in as the Clemson running back here behind Taj Boyd. Here's Watkins on that jet sweep. Looking for daylight. Swan couldn't wrestle him down. And he picks up the first down. Well, they haven't used it a lot, but just enough for that jet sweep. You've got to respect Sammy Watkins coming to motion. And kind of a quick little shovel pass there, touch pass there to Watkins with that speed. And here they come now on tempo. They put it into Watkins' hands again. Remember now that Chad Morris wanted 90-some plays, and he's had only 45 here in the third quarter. The dogs have been able to keep control of the ball for 22 minutes and 36 seconds compared to Clemson's 14.57. Snapping it off quickly to Humphreys. The sure-handed one's got another first down. Getting that ball out 
side in a hurry. It's worth revisiting for people that are just tuning in. This Georgia defense is trying to play out here. There are three true freshmen, a linebacker and two defensive backs on this field trying to match up with this tempo and this execution of Taj Boyd in the Clemson defense. Holding up for the most part, okay. So reset the clock is what they're doing right now. Looks like Herrera's down. And so that's might be cramping yep. over there. This is the kind of night when guys are going to cramp on the field. With this intense humidity down here. He's over there on that far side. You know when you talk about uh, the Georgia defense too deep. I heard me mention to it. And there you see the eight freshmen. Just unbelievable. Seven of them are true freshmen. And on the other side against this complex offense that Chad Morris whistles up. It's kind of interesting. We'll come back and talk about the terminology that Chad uses it. So let's take a break here. We're deadlocked at 20 28, and Herrera is still being tended to. Not everyone can pull off orange. Only the people who have embraced what life has to offer. That's the Clemson family. Here at Clemson, you really have to have this sense of determination saying, look, I am committed to this. I want this to move forward. I'm going to continue to drive in that direction. Everyone here at Clemson takes the time to ensure that your individual success is achieved. People say there's something in these hills. It's so true. Nothing compares to Clemson. Herrero is down on the Clemson side of the field, so he's walking across now to the Georgia sideline, and another freshman, Reggie Carter, who comes in to replace him at linebacker here with 7-18 left. We talked about Chad Morris's terminology, folks. Taj Boyd telling us this is some of the plays he would call. Slide R, zoom, pink Miami. That's right. Slide R, zoom, pink Miami. That must be Miami. They put it over in Pete's hands. And still another freshman, Floyd, gets him out. And there is Chad. And Chad. Chad has brought to this offense the last couple of years what they call answers. They tag almost every play. And McDowell, with a great cut off that right foot that we told you about in the first half, has picked up the first down at the 20-yard line. Nice job. We saw him use that jump cut earlier. He follows his block there. That was the move right there. That was two true freshmen that just got welcomed to college football. Leonard Floyd came up there and Trey Matthews. They said nobody ran like this in high school. See what kind of tempo Chad whistles up here as they come in. Another little short of the red zone. And McDowell was stopped on that on that play. The tags that he has brought to this offense allows Taj Boyd on every single play that's called, it's built in. So if he sees something in coverage, he can either go with the play that Chad Morris has called, or he can abort that and get the ball out on the perimeter the way we've seen him float, throw the ball out to these wide receivers. Taj's going to take off the token. And he spotted a receiver, and it was Watkins for the first down and out of bounds. There was plenty of daylight for Taj, but then he saw his teammate always keeping his eyes up. Look at this. And I, lo I love that Sammy Watkins uses his hands as well as he does. You're right, he could have run, but he saw his man there, eyes up, found the target. But great hands there, soft hands by Sammy Watkins. This time, the battle is written down. If you're wondering where Chad Morris got this offense, it's from Gus Malzahn, who now is the head coach at Auburn. That's right. Morris was under fire at Stephenville, Texas, after they came up 6-4 in their second year. He had to have an answer, and he persisted. Took his staff over to Malzahn, over to Arkansas, where he was a high school coach, brought it on back, and the rest is history. He became a Texas legend. Handed off to McDowell, twisting and spinning down to the seven-yard line. This offense is, is now spread, <laughs> excuse the pun, across the country. And what it's built on is wearing teams down. They love to, to tempo you to eventually wear a defensive line down and get teams into the fourth quarter and have their hands on their hips and hope that fatigue gives them an advantage. Well, it's third and goal right now for Taj Boyd. He's going to snap it off. A little high to Watkins incomplete. 
Now we're tied at 28. Here's the fourth down. Dabo Sweeney doesn't hesitate. Catanzaro coming onto the field. We saw him make a pretty good catch earlier where he had to adjust to the football. I thought that was just great coverage that time by the freshman Langley who took away the slant that time from Sammy Watkins. One of the best in the country. Put down about a 24 yarder. And he gives Clemson a three point lead. Let's check in with Robert Flores for an update. Robert. Well, that is something, and of course, the, the one that they're still buzzing about in North Dakota State. Craig Bowles is the coach up there. He's won the last two FCS championships, okay? And I believe he has beaten FBS teams four or five straight times now, probably. Minnesota's in that group. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. lethal, and it goes to Kansas State. And what's incredible to me is the way they won that game. They, they went, I think, 18 plays and 80 yards on the road in Manhattan, Kansas, to be able to pull off that victory. It wasn't as if they just had to hold on. They had to go win it. And they did with an 18-play drive. I think Johnny today played with almost too much emotion. Talking a little bit of trash. He got benched there by Kevin Sumlin. Eastern Washington over number 25, Oregon State. That might be one of the that might be the biggest upset of the weekend. Boy, you're harsh. Finally, my man Johnny. I love Johnny. Johnny Halftime. He's, he's talking too much trash. He's giving the, the signs. It's good money. theater. Oh, it's great theater. We love that. the back and take you to the years. Scott Wesley back there in the end zone. Remember the fake punt from Georgia. They've gone out six straight series and they caught at the right time there with Barber. And all of a sudden it got Aaron Murray into, into some rhythm. He found a nice throw to Bennett. He found a big fullback hits and then Gurley with tremendous effort. And the emotion there from Gurley and the Georgia offense. We'll see if that continues into this drive. Now that, again, they find themselves in that familiar role. Down, this time only by three. They've been down by seven tonight three times and answered the call. You can see that Gurley is the running back behind Hicks. Again, Murray the crowd up in it now. Murray sees eight guys up at the line of scrimmage here. He's got another delay. I don't know if he can get the timeout or not. Let me see. Like from the sideline. Yeah. Yep. Timeout, Georgia. Here's what drives yeah. you crazy if you're Mark Rick. They get the timeout, but it came from the sideline. You got a four year starting quarterback. I don't know if he does it. Maybe they didn't notify him where the play clock is here in this stadium. Well, there's two it's obvious a, ones. Out there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, it's, it's the second or third time that he it's, he's oblivious to it. It's, it's not his, he's not even looking up. And usually that's something that's just part of your DNA to recognize right. that play clock. In, in fairness to Murray, Herbie, he's having trouble with the crowd and some of these players making adjustments as he comes up to the line. Communication is becoming a problem here. This is this is a very, very loud stadium. I, I, Watch I him now. I completely Look at him agree, trying to change but, things but, up. But he should be peaking every so often at the, get, at the play clock. Every so often, he's not he's not even registering on it until all of a sudden it's too late and it came from the sideline. He'd be the first one Agreed. to tell you that he needs to peek up, look at the defense, make adjustments, play clock. Look at the defense, make adjustments, play clock. It's not even on his radar here in a few of these snaps. Soft corner underneath. And it's a running game with Gurley. Gurley breaks to daylight. And the Clemson player is going to have to come out for a play. That's Robert Smith. His helmet came off during the play. He's out of play. This is an offense that couldn't do anything right for six straight series. And all of a sudden, a fake punt. And all of a sudden, they're finding some creases. All of a sudden, they've got a little bit of mojo going. It's the first time that Gurley or Marshall have been here these last two series. That's a couple of yards that time. Second down now coming up. And as much as we've talked about Georgia's offensive line and how they struggled where Clemson was taking the fight to them, got to give them some credit, too. I mean, they, the, the fake punt, and all of a sudden, they started to dig in a little bit tough, a little bit deeper and push Clemson around, and so far on this drive, they've done, they've done the same thing. Second down and eight. Curly. 
short of the first down. But it is third and very manageable. Again, at least they're getting a push. At least there's a little bit of room there. Put that big fullback Hicks through the hole first and Gurley to follow. It's just nice to see Todd Gurley back down the field after leaving the field in the first half and having to go back to the locker room. Now Marshall replaces him for this third down. half the distance Chris Conley was the target that time personal foul force collar tackle Brent, half the distance the goal first down Brent third down and short and I just I never understand this and we see it a lot of college we see it a lot of college football the big cushion the big cushion, it makes it so easy for Murray and Conley to execute. It's just pitch and catch, put the ball out there. And then Conley does a good job with the football in his hands. But the throw, by the time he caught that football, it's a first down for Georgia. Marshall is the running back on this first and goal. And now it's second and goal from the three-yard line. Got to like the combination of Hicks and Gurley down in this area. Hicks provides a big push to help that offensive line out. You might want to diagram a play with Gurley blocking for Hicks. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> also have Merritt Hall, the backup fullback, in there as kind of an H back. What a battering ramp. Number 48 is. He's going to take it in the action, I would think, on second and goal, and he does just that. Now it is third and goal. I think I would have slipped it to number 48, Herbie. Oh, yeah. He, kid is proven. I need that quick handoff, you know. <laughs> with dive, you dive play right up the middle. You're still going to play with the Buckeyes. Oh, Get yeah. Fullback. Get a throw. No doubt about it. Yeah, this is also a good time to consider... You fake it to Gurley, and they have such good tight ends in this area. Ch challenge the discipline of the Clemson defense. Yeah, they are dandy. Roman Lynch. There's the fullback. My call didn't work. <laughs> Time for Herbie's. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked earlier. It's been a great play, and they, they lead up with Hall. They have backup fullback, but Clemson gets the penetration and just nowhere that time for the big man Hicks to go. So, it's like Robert got Smith. Smith is down yep. and looks uh, like he's cramping. Mm -hmm. So Patrick Bielus, who has replaced Marshall Morgan, who obviously was suspended for this game by Mark Rick, and Bielus, who's been perfect on his four extra points, will attempt the tying field goal unless of course the dogs decide they're going to fake it remember we've already had a fake punt by Georgia in this game well, they're taking him straight to the locker room be an IV it's interesting Georgia was down seven a few times and they had a chance to go down and tie and they did and then they get down three now again a chance to, to tie this game up so this should be about a 15-yarder for Bielus. High snap, bubbled, and won't get it. Clemson football. Nathan Theus is the long snapper. The snap was high. Erickson did all that he could. And when you have a bad snap, it just disrupts the rhythm. Erickson does a good job of trying to hold on to it and give himself a chance, but he just could not get the football down. Now watch Dabo's reaction. There are no foregone conclusions when it comes to special teams. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. 
And he's been a far better head coach than a whole lot of folks in the college game thought he would be. He's done a remarkable job here with Clemson. And he survives the tying field goal there. It's 31 28. It's Clemson. Last minute now of the third quarter. Taj Boyd has got McDowell as his running back. McDowell picks his way out to the 10. And, uh, Kobe, what's McDowell gained here tonight? Is he, uh, getting close? And he's, to he's about 74 yards, and he's had 74 tough yards. He's had to, yeah. you know, he's had to, to work pretty hard to be able to come up with it. You can see it's, this is the point. This is going to be interesting. Fourth quarter. If you and I think it's hot up here, how'd you like to be out there for three oh. quarters of. Oh, thank this you. Is, this is a challenge. It's a challenge. That was that. You're going back to Thursday night? <laughs> I was going. <laughs> I don't want to take you back. <laughs> but, folks, stay tuned after the game for your local news over most of these ABC stations. Be sure to turn to ESPN News for Sports Center for highlights of a great day in sports. Th this is a, a testament to your strength and conditioning program. Who worked the hardest in August to get their team ready for a fourth quarter game like this? That's what we're going to find out between these two teams. Quick snap behind Watkins. Had to reach for the ball. He really, with you know, Taj Boyd on a couple of those that he slipped to the, he's been a little bit behind the receiver. That's what right hasn't made it easy. And even the touchdown, Watkins had to go back and, and make a play on the ball. But, but something that I want to add to that, that, that uh, exhaustion and the heat, it also, maybe more importantly, affects the mind. And when you start to make mental mistakes, that's when you all of a sudden can cost your team a football game. So it's not just fatigue, it's it's mental fatigue as well. Facing a third and eight here in the final half minute of the third. And content to run it with DJ Howard. Howard's a young man out of Lincoln, Alabama. So our final seconds will tick away in the fourth quarter. So who wants it more? We're about to find out. That's right. And we'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The great game in Clemson. So we are back for the money quarter. The fourth quarter, 31-28. Clemson punted away. Swan is back with the fair catch. Should be good field position coming up. So a reminder, Dick Sporting Goods, kickoff week continues Monday night. Heinz Field of Pittsburgh. Herbie, I want to ask you about this one. Florida State goes into play. Paul Chris Pittsburgh team, second year there. Could it be a trap with the Seminoles and all those new coaches? Yeah, I think the only way it could be is if Florida State's underestimating Pitt. Uh, you know, I, I think you and I both have a lot of respect for what Pitt can do under that kind of leadership and guidance in their second year there. But I think Florida State's a pretty special team. I'm anxious to see their quarterback play in that ball game, Jameis Winston. Gurley opens the fourth quarter for the dog. Play action. Going to throw in underneath and a wide open receiver on that play was Justin Scott Wesley. You know, Aaron Murray who comes into this game against top 15 teams, one and nine. Look at him versus unranked, 25 and two. You can see the numbers down the line, how much better he's played against unranked teams. And the one win against the top 15 teams came against Florida last year, where he's 12 for 24 with three interceptions. Tonight, he's playing this top 10 team on the road. Performance uh, tonight could help him, I think, gain a lot of confidence in his team this year, week one. Really looking for daylight, and there was nothing there. Penalty flag. Throwing on the offense's left hash. Number 34, London Christian. Going to back the offense up. That flag came about 20 or 30 yards away from where the football First was. First foul. Lot below the way. 86. Offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. And Scott Wesley, and that's a new emphasis 
And we've on that block this year. Just a slot receiver. And, you know, we bragged about him and everything he's done up at the top of your screen, right on the hash mark, way away from the football. We talked just the other day with an official about the chop block, and as you said, being emphasized more, trying to avoid those injuries. So it gives Georgia a first and 25. Gary steps away, and Clemson keeps on and coming. He's down at the 45-yard line. Well, they got, Brent, they got the penetration the way they were earlier. That time, they just could not wrap up Todd Gurley. I think Todd Gurley's starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm after the injury early. He, when he did come back, he didn't quite seem to be running with the same juice. Now we're seeing him, I think, after the touchdown. I think he's starting to feel a lot better. Murray looking downfield in the middle. And Jay Rome is the target back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Travis Blanks making the play. Here. Keep an eye on 88 Lynch. He occupies the linebackers. Well-designed play. The, the tight end lined up in the backfield. This does a little outcut. The Shuey 33 falls with it in a huge void there. And a good ball out of by Aaron Murray. Oh, yeah. Let me correct myself. That was Michael Bennett. He pulled in there on that play. Third down. So that was my mistake. Murray checks over to the sideline. Notice Clemson has walked their corners up a lot closer to the wide receivers of Georgia. And back off. Fires and short of the first down. Well short of it. They go back to Bennett again. And Suey makes the stop for the Tigers. And Georgia fans at home might be saying, hey, let's go for it. But this is all about field position at this, at this point in the game. Plenty of football. Obviously, play field position and try to pin Taj Boyd down deep. He would not fake a punt the second no time way. the game. No way. No. Would he? Uh, 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 I'm uh, uh, thinking that America's in there. Clemson special team might have been reminded. Yeah. As you look down Clemson at their alignment. Clemson actually uses a timeout here. And Clemson, their first charge time out of the half. 30 second timeout. I think you have to be in punt safe, timeout on the field. which is almost like you're not even thinking of a return. They're punting from the 40-yard line. You're punt safe just in case they fake it. They weren't ready. They had to call the timeout. Twelve minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Fourth down for Georgia. Adam Erickson in to punt. Humphreys, who has been sure-handed, Receiving punts for Clemson, standing back on the Tigers' 10-yard line here. Humphreys lets it go. It takes a Tiger bounce out to about the 14-yard line. We take a look at our Pacific Life game a summary, and Todd Gurley exploded for two touchdowns in this game. Early. Yeah, he had a long run, and then just a great effort here on his second touchdown, coming back from an injury. Good touch, boy. Not, not a huge night tonight, but he does have four total touchdowns and a perfectly thrown ball here to Zach Brooks on a wheel route. And it looks like Georgia may have a chance to tie this game up as we get ready for the fourth quarter. And a bad snap keeps Clemson with that 31 to 28 lead. McDowell, the running back for Taj Boyd. They show jet sweep and then bring McDowell right up to the heart of that Georgia defense here. And now it becomes second down from the 15 or 16 yard line. All we've heard this week or even the whole month is is Clemson ready for the big time? Are they ready to play with a team like Georgia? Well, there's an opportunity in the fourth quarter with a three point lead. Do you play safe and play not to lose? Or do you play to win and be aggressive with your attack? Play action fake. Coming Love deep it. down the sideline. Bryant breaks free. Great speed. Makes it. Drops it. Incomplete. Oh, mercy. What a big play that would have been at the 35 yard line. Bryant is down. He had it for a moment. Uh, Bryant, Bryant, again, he's dropped a few balls tonight. He's made some mental errors. He gets behind. That's a mismatch. Martavius Bryant against Connor Norman. You're going to take that every single time.
time. The ball's a little bit underthrown, and give Norman some credit for not giving up on the play. You have to finish the process of the catch to, to, to make that a, a legal catch, and Bryant unable to do that. I mentioned the first half doghouse. He did not play against LSU in the turn for label. He was suspended. Even worse, and the coach said uh, that he was uncommitted academically. And he has not caught a pass here tonight from Taj Boyd. This is third and six. And another timeout by Clemson in a 31 to 20 timeout. game in a fourth Clemson. quarter. Your second charge. You use one of half. your punts before a and punt safe situation. And now another timeout. That leaves him with one timeout and a competitive game. You wonder if that may come back to haunt them, those two timeouts. Just saying, you know, are they going to attack? Are they going to sit back? Are they go right down the sideline to Bryant and had the matchup. We were talking about Dabo as we see Brent Venables over there. Talking to his defense. He knows. Got to fire him up. If they don't make this, it's up to his guys. There were a couple of good old boys here in Clemson who didn't like him very much anyway, and they said, Oh, good, that's a good hire. We'll get rid of him in one more year. <laughs> Third down and six. Welcome to Southern Fried Football on a Saturday night in Clemson, South Carolina. There's Taj running hard to the right, throws for it, and he's got the first down. Sharon Peak, the junior from Moore, South Carolina. Now watch Taj Boyd on the roll. Avoided the blitz, rolled out. Georgia thinks that Peak bobbled this football towards the sideline. They may take another look at that. Did he secure that football inbounds? Definitely bobbled the ball. But did he hold on to it? Comes to get the snap off, so it doesn't matter. Good down. <laughs> That's smart. Now the crowd is booing. Did they get it stopped? No, they were before the snap. Or, they're they're uh, upset with McDowell getting hit after the whistle. Uh, they're, okay. they're reacting to. But they did a good job of snapping the ball. That, that, at the very least, was worth another look. Second down and seven. And McDowell. It's going to be about a third and two. And you have got to be impressed with the toughness that this running back has demonstrated here tonight. Now, Helmet comes off. That means he's off for a play. Here he comes to the sideline, and quickly, here comes Zach Brooks now for third and two. It's, it's a type of back that they recruit, and toughness. You know, Ellington had that. We've seen, we've seen the time tonight from both Brooks and McDowell. First down, Brooks. Comes in for the play after McDowell loses his helmet. Bang, straight ahead. Ryan Shatley, Norton, Beasley up front. And he, he has a reputation on this roster with Ellington now on to the NFL of being that tough back, that physical back. So on third and short, he's that guy you want in the backfield. 10 now, 11. Taj Boyd, hit, escapes, dashes over, breaks another tackle. You've got to love Taj Boyd's toughness. If you're an NFL scout, if you're one of the 22, you've got to like this run right here. And this doesn't show up in the stats, but instead of being right there, he's sacked. Instead of being second and 19 or second and 20, I mean, it, he should be taken down right here, and instead he fights through that, gets away from the loach, and gets back to the line of scrimmage for a second and 10. Zach Brooks and McDowell are on the field for this play. They have used both of them a couple of times here tonight. They got them both in right now. Late hand off to Brooks. Great play. That was a terrific formation with both McDowell and Brooks. And Brooks came for the first down. They move the chains. And it's the first time we've seen them call this play. Injured players were Meek Wilson. And that brings Georgia. a boo for the crowd. Remember, Chad was going up tempo this time. And with the injured player, that slows the game down right now. 
We've seen him doing that a little bit. Here's the, here's this draw. It's it's a both backs. They have not shown that very often tonight. But that delayed handoff, that draw, these linebackers haven't seen that. So they start to clear out. They see the action from Boyd thinking about a pass. It opened up a great running lane. McDowell gave a little bit of an effort on a block, and it's a heck of a run there by Zach Brooks. Both teams huddle up as a result. Talking about Taj Boyd, you may wonder, where did he get the name Taj? Is that his real name? Yes, it is his real name. His mother named him for a rhythm and blues singer by the name of Taj Abdul Samad. That's right, he was named Taj at birth. And he could repeat as the ACC Player of the Year, and he would be the first to do that Number since Charlie Ward at Florida State back in 92 and 93. Brent, I, I should mention that with Wilson walking off, I'm not speculating that he is faking an injury, but I will tell you that I've talked to a number of head coaches and defensive coordinators that are so tired of the up-tempo offenses that part of their plan is to fake injuries. They actually work on it in practice. They fake injuries, and right now there isn't a rule to prevent them from faking injuries. I'm not saying that they're doing that here, but that is something the defensive coaches are are putting in to their package to slow down tempo offense. Brooks goes in motion, and McDowell spins away, and he's headed for a first and more. And he's down across the 10-yard line. So, ladies and gentlemen, we came in here raving about Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall of Georgia. But how about Rodney McDowell and Zach Brooks of Clemson? What think, a night. I think you and I both had a suspension that you might see a pretty good night from McDowell. I think this guy's been waiting and paying his dues for an opportunity. That's a heck of a spin move. And he's got that combination. Low center of gravity, great balance, and quickness. Now Zach Brooks, his turn. It'll be second down and goal coming up for Clemson. McDowell now over 100 yards, 19 carries. And they have done a good job of mixing in Brooks. And in a night like this, with this humidity, even though they've only run 66 plays, which for them isn't very much, you need both backs to be able to stay fresh, especially in this fourth quarter. High snap. Gets over. Taj Boyd's head. And it stopped play up front. The whistle had sounded. There's a penalty. Goal start. Offense number 68. Five-yard penalty. Thank you for the five-yard <laughs> penalty if I'm Clemson. Yeah, David Beasley, the left guard, got a little bit of a head start pulling around from his left to his right. Watch 68 right in the middle of the left guard. Gets a little bit of a head start. That might have triggered the center, too. Yeah. At 320 pounds in the fourth quarter, I don't blame him for taking a little bit of a head start. They catch a break. This is a so big great. series coming down to whether they get a field goal here or can they get a touchdown to try to go up by 10. Second down and goal. Ball back at the nine-yard line. High snap again. Throws in zone. Bryant can't hang on. A shot off to Cannon thinking that Bryant held on to it over at the other end of the field. <laughs> Bryant's had a, a rough night. That would have, in fairness, right, that would have been a heck of a catch. He gets turned around reverses now he's got to locate the football i don't know if he ever really got a good look at it it's easy to see his hands on the ball but i don't think he ever had a good look and had a chance to make that catch but he was one-on-one -on -one with a freshman and with his size you got to take that chance on a fade so it's third down and goal Dodd's trying to hold on they've settled for a field goal right now boyd fires it dive no short of the end zone Going to be marked at the two-yard line. Seconder, they say, was out at the two. They're pointing. Look at his right foot or the left. Boy, that, that may have he close. may have stayed in. His Instant foot replay. was in the air. Instant replay. Yeah. Going to take a look at this. The his left linesman. foot stays in the air. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown, yep. and that's going to get overturned on that picture. Runner stepped yep. out of bounds prior to crossing the goal line. The play is under further review. This one's going to get overturned, folks, on yep. that last angle we saw behind it. When you come right in behind his cleats. Well, his, it's, yeah, his foot is elevated. It's, it's really not even close. From his perspective, maybe he couldn't see the left foot in the air. It's the one behind the, the foot. It shows that the heel did not. There we go. Here we go. Right there. Right there. It's in the air. 
crowd saw the replay. And what you appreciate here at Death Valley is they show the controversial view to let the crowd know that it's a touchdown. <laughs> what I appreciate the fans out here. I mean, we ain't getting out of here alive unless I mean, this is a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, you're in Death Valley when you can high five the crowd. I know some of those fans out. <laughs> they were here in the 80s. Exactly. <laughs> After further review, the runner did not step out of bounds. It is a touchdown. It was 7.40 to go in this game. That drive of 12 plays, 87 yards, and a touchdown will be remembered. If they hold on, that, that drive will be remembered for a long time. I'm a Taj Boyd guy. Yeah, me too. Okay? Me too. DeAndre Hopkins gone. Ellington gone. Under fire here tonight, and he finds a way That's to right. get into the ends. There's DeAndre right there, and he's trying to help Bryant right now. Get his head right. Wants to get his head right. He's in a tank. He's trying to get him back up. Ten-point advantage. Still a lot of football to be played, but that was a big drive, and the right call made upstairs in a replay move. Is anybody out there still a doubter about Clemson? Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Windows. Brought to you by Windows. The 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And Verizon. Never be without football with the NFL Mobile from Verizon. Well, the votes are in and fans have deemed this the blimp-worthy game of the week. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, where there is superior performance. Goodyear is there. Goodyear, more driven. And we hope you've enjoyed this one, folks. It's been a dandy. 7.40 to go, and Georgia needs two scores. You got a quarterback making his 42nd career start. He's got to get his team down in a hurry. And you can see he's played better in the second half. This offense has played better. Go back to that botched missed field goal and how big of an impact that is having on this football game. They not only need to score, Brent, with 7.40 to go, they need to get down and they need to get points on the board relatively quickly. Todd Gurley, the running back. Cuts back. Got a first down. And the safety finally slowed him down at the 49-yard line. That was Robert Smith, who may have made a touchdown saving stop there. Brett, that same play was a touchdown earlier in the game for Gurley. That student body right. That time they go student body left and get him on the edge in a hurry. Came back with him. What an outstanding running back. Mike, Mike, oh, yeah. Wow. oh yeah, Mike Bobo kind of sticking to his guns, still just kind of doing what we do, being patient there, and he's right. There's no reason to panic at this point. I mean, they picked up some big yards here with two runs. I mean, you're taking a look at Todd Gurley tonight. He's a little bit dinged up. He's got a thigh injury. Between he and T.J. Yeldon and Lake Seastrong and Baylor, those are three probably the premier backs in college football. Another first down, just pounding away, and there is a penalty flag. This could be holding. Thrown back at midfield. And it was holding. David Andrews, the center, 61. Looked like he got caught. Holding. Offense for 61. Yard penalty. Second down. It's been a battle in the trenches, and Clemson has rotated a lot of different people. Andrews is trying to hold up there the best he can against, again, Grady Jarrett. Georgia has more yards tonight than Clemson. They have 481 to Clemson's 452. But they're short by 10 on the scoreboard. Second down and 15. One-on-one, -on -one. incomplete. Chris Conley came back, 
Peters had coverage. Conley looking for the flag. Nothing doing. Great coverage that time by Gary Peters. Comes into this game with five starts a year ago. That was much tighter coverage. Everybody knows about Aaron Murray and that back shoulder fade, and Peters anticipated that. Six minutes and down two scores, fourth and 15. Now you might want to go for it, but nothing new, it says Rick. Bringing out the punt unit. Thir they rushed three that time and dropped eight. There was really nowhere to go, and the ball wasn't thrown very well by Aaron Murray. You know, penalties have hurt this Georgia offense. They've got nine penalties tonight, and I don't know how many times we've seen them going backwards and trying to execute on third down and long when they've had trouble. They've really self-destructed. So, Adam Humphreys to back to receive this punt. Jimmy's just going to let it bounce. Georgia tied it down it. And it goes back into the end zone. And that was some move back in there. <laughs> I think he felt maybe one of his teammates that touched touch the football. It? Do you think? Take a yeah. look at this. It looked like Ben Bullwer, a linebacker, 10, is back there. And he, he, was, he gets he hit right into the he football. He was hit into the football. So really a heads-up play there because he was out of the end zone. It's a heads-up play to pick up that football. That was C.J. Jones. He's a senior corner. That could be the play of the night. <laughs> Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina. ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC great opening weekend here on the Labor Day holiday. Hand off now to McDowell. And Clemson goes to work on the clock. And you and I have just been marveling at the reaction of this senior on this play. Yeah, Boulware knocks it into the end zone. If Georgia jumps on that right there, right there, it's a touchdown. How about the awareness of a senior playing on special teams, C.J. Jones? He's not playing tonight as a corner. He gets his chance on, on special teams, and just by having the awareness to pick up that ball, he may have saved Clemson a big turning point in this game. His name will be up on the board of the DBs. <laughs> it should be. Welcome into the meeting. Absolutely. Great job. Second down and two. So it'll be third down coming up. We, you and I both also at the break marveling at that drive when Clemson was up three. They decided to really attack Georgia's defense. And we saw Zach Brooks have a chance to run the football. He along with McDowell. And this is a touchdown. I mean, you worry about the play action to McDowell, the jet sweep motion. And then they end up throwing it out to the tight end, and nobody's out there. There's just a lot to deal with. And we all applaud Clemson for being aggressive with how they attack Georgia up three late. So Mark Rick burns a timeout here, and we'll come right back with third and four. Coming up after the game, stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up with Robert Flores. So we come to one of those third downs as you count down the final minutes of a football game. It becomes so critical for the team trailing. Georgia needs a stop right here to force a punt and put the ball back in Murray's hands. He's going to keep it in a foot race. Got the first down. You and I were talking about how big a first down opportunity this is. Clemson gets to the edge. Georgia brought pressure. They brought their linebackers. Good awareness there by Taj Boyd. A good call to get him away from that pressure and to pick up that first down. And the clock moves with Georgia only having one timeout in the two-possession game. Taj Boyd, when he was a youngster, his favorite football team, the Atlanta Falcons. And that was before Michael Vick ever played quarterback for him. 
And when he came, Michael Vick became his big hero. And before coming back, guess who we talked to this offseason? That's right, Michael Vick. And Vick said, if you want to be the best, then do it. Stay right there at first. That's the advice that Vick gave him. Great. Rogers Redding actually texted me, supervisor of officials, and brought up a good point, and I'm glad he did. When a player is blocked into a ball, as it bullwear is here, it's as if he never touched the ball. So, C.J. Jones, we thought, made a great play to be able to pick up the football. He probably thinking the same thing you and I are. But when a player is blocked into the ball, it is it's as if he never touched the ball. So, we appreciate Rogers Absolutely. having our back. Yeah, that's great, man. But we still think Jonesy made a creative. They did. I still want to go down there and hug him. That was a great effort. Uh, his heart was in the right spot. Well, and, and you know, you've got to give him credit. He's not too sure at that moment. Absolutely. You know, he can't see well, it that so he's getting fast. pushed in. Yeah. He thinks the ball's off my teammates. Yeah. I'm going to go get it. Sure. It doesn't take I'm away anything I think about Jones on the No. Play. No. And Georgia uses their last time out and down two possessions. Now it's about. Taj Boyd trying to protect the football. And George is thinking, we've got to get that ball out. We need a miracle here. We need to somehow get the ball away from these running backs or from Taj Boyd. So DJ Howard comes in. And the clock moving now inside of four minutes. Georgia came in ranked number five. Clemson number eight. It was the only top ten matchup of the weekend. Georgia must go to Athens after this game and get ready for South Carolina at home. Then they play a team that they should beat before LSU comes in to Athens. So in a month, we're really going to know something about the uh, about the goal. It's a big win for the ACC. Oh, phew. Think about the ACC matching up with the SEC. If Clemson holds on here, it's going to be two straight for Clemson over the SEC. And also two for the ACC collectively. We all know when it comes down to bragging rights, anytime you can beat a top five SEC team, that doesn't happen very often. Davos Winnie's got it going. Stand bounds. He wants to stand bounds. He does just that. He goes down. Just what you said earlier. I was really, we, you and I had a chance to, to get around, obviously, every week, some of these players and, and being around Taj Boyd, one of the more cerebral quarterbacks and pleasant individuals you're ever going to be around. And Sammy Watkins also is a leader, a guy that uh, I think is anxious to, to have a big year for this team and provide that leadership, a good heads-up play there. And we'll take a look at Clemson's schedule here before we sign off and you start to look at who they have to play. It's easy to point to Florida State or South Carolina, but if you're a Clemson fan, you know what I'm talking about. Look out for Duke. Look out for Maryland at noon. Those are the games that make Clemson fans nervous. Fair catch is signal by Georgia at the 36 yard line. And that is Damian Swan. Let's check in now with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brent, to Death Valley, to a team that calls Death Valley home. LSU gets a second touchdown run from Terrence McGee. They are leading TCU 30 to 17 third quarter right now on ESPN. So LSU appears headed for a win in that game. When was the last time you saw LSU with 30 points in a third quarter against a pretty good defense? Cam Cameron maybe opening things up there for Zach Mettenberg. So the dogs have 225 and they trail it by two scores. Murray comes in, got a first down on his opening pass, and where has Mr. Lynch been? That was a powerful run after that reception. Clock will only stop for Georgia. First downs, and when they get the ball out of bounds, Murray's got to have some urgency here. Use his experience to help him out. Is Clemson going to be in prevent mode? Are they going to be in attack mode? Right now, it's prevent. Down the field he goes. And another first down at the 26-yard line. Conley, the receiver that time. The dangerous thing about that prevent is you give a guy like Aaron Murray time, he's eventually going to find a seam in that, that coverage and drop eight guys back. Marshall. Barges across the 20-yard line. 
Try to catch him off guard there. Obviously, clock will continue to move without getting that first down. There's Murray throwing it underneath. And Marshall still battling for the pylon. And they say he's out of bounds at the one-yard line. That was a fine run oh, and a catch gosh. by Marshall. Oh, yeah. I, I told you on the field before the game how powerful he looks in person. You can see his lower body strength. Todd Gurley's so big, he's the one that gets most of credit for that power. But Keith Marshall is a heavy load himself. Clemson better get the good hands, people ready. Touchdown on an onside kick will be coming. Murray dives into that end zone. Line judge now signals touchdown. That was four plays, five plays, 64 yards in a minute six. That's what he had to do. As you said, get the hands team ready for Clemson. And George is thinking about recovering an onside kick and having a chance here to maybe tie this game up. Great job by Murray. Leads him right down, as I said, five plays. They don't have any timeouts. That's where the experience of Murray comes in big for this Georgia offense. And I don't agree. Clemson sits back and prevent. It just allows them to be able to pick apart their secondary. So Bielus tacks on the extra point. Pulls to within three. So the young man, Patrick Bielus, who has replaced Marshall Morgan, he's quite a story here tonight, but he hasn't been the kickoff man. Now let's see what the coaching staff comes up with. And 19 remaining here in regulation. You've been around coaches your whole life, Brad. You know, this is the first game. Think about all, how many times they've tried to practice these kind of scenarios in August. They don't have any reps. This isn't week eight. You practice it for three or four weeks. You've got some true freshmen that are on the hands team. And you, you execute it in practice, and then you come out in a game on national TV, and you hope everybody executes it the way you've been working on it the last four weeks. Remember, Georgia's out of timeouts. Adam Erickson is putting the ball on the tee for the dog. Came into this game as the number two kicker. He, of course, was the holder. On that one field goal, remember on that high snap? Now big is that right now. Looking for the high hop. And Rourke picks it up. Bryant finally makes a play tonight. Octavius <laughs> Bryant waits until the last oh minute 17. And now he's got a big smile on his face. Where's, where's uh, Hopkins, Luke Hopkins, who's down there trying to pump him up and keep his head right? That ball's coming to Brian. Brian's thinking, I guess I'm going to make this play. Sammy Watkins is like, I got this. I thought for I sure. I got this. It was right to Watkins, and Brian intercepted it. Good for <laughs> Brian making that play. A slight underdog. And certainly the less respected of these two teams, the Clemson Tigers are winning a big one. And now they will set sail toward the ACC games after South Carolina State, North Carolina State, Wake Forest, Syracuse, Boston College, October 19th, circling. Here's what I'm circling <laughs> after that one. The okay. Florida State I, game, you know what I'm, I'm looking I am at. circling that I'm one. I'm telling I'm, you, they're going to be fired up for Florida State. I, you and I are circling Florida State. I want Clemson to circle Maryland. I'll be at the Esso <laughs> Club the week of the Florida State game. <laughs> oh, man. It's a big win. Just a huge win for the program. Clemson triumphs over Georgia. 38-35. And many in the crowd storm the field here. Coaches shake hands. Let's, let's go down to Heather. Davo, congratulations. The theme this year for you was unthinkable. Did your team just do the unthinkable? Well, there's never been a non-SEC team beat two top 10 SEC teams in a row 
until tonight. It's only unthinkable if you don't think it. And I'm just as proud of how our guys chose to believe. Talk to Georgia. Going to have a great year. But I'm proud of the Clemson Tigers. That you can't accomplish everything in one game. But what did you accomplish tonight? We just won the opener. That's all. You know, our first goal is to win the opener. It was a great win. We got a long way to go. All of our goals are in front of us. We got to get ready for next week. Season starts tomorrow. Congratulations, Dabo. Go enjoy it with your team, Brent. Thank you very much, Heather. Stay safe. <laughs> The scene in Clemson, South Carolina. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's join Tiger Band in the singing of the Clemson University of Alabama as we celebrate a very special start to our season. A big victory over the number five team in the nation. And then you've got a feel for Georgia. The players and the coaches, they go home and they've got to get ready for Steve Spurrier and the South Carolina Gamecocks who played on Thursday. You're right. And I, I just want to say that Clemson, it's a huge win. They're excited about what they can accomplish and where they're going to be heading in the, in the rankings. But you're right about Georgia. Georgia has South Carolina next week in a huge conference game, which will get Mark Rick to be able to get his players to focus. Also, LSU in a few weeks. So they're still... They didn't get embarrassed tonight. They shouldn't drop very far, in my opinion, in the, in the rankings. So they can still have a great year. They just need to regroup and try to get healthy. Well, they could make it to the national championship. No Remember no a year ago. Absolutely. They lost at South Carolina, got into the championship game by winning the East, and then almost, almost right. upset Alabama. And, and, and they still control, obviously, their destiny to get to an SEC championship no game. So to me, you lick your wounds, you learn from this, you try to get healthy, and you try to get ready for a very yeah, physical game. You just game. put your finger, though, on something that might be the most difficult. You try to get healthy. No doubt. No doubt. We'll have to see how they come out of this game because there are a lot of guys on the other side with ice. Malcolm Mitchell, who knows how bad his knee is. We'll probably find that out later tomorrow. Curley got banged up. There are a lot of players that uh, that, that were fatigued, and, and uh, we'll see what their, what their status is. But they've got, again, South Carolina and LSU just in this month alone. You know, when you think about Davo, and Clemson, maybe they've played three straight SEC teams. They lost to South Carolina yep. here. South Carolina came in and snapped yep. their home winning streak. But then they beat LSU on the last play of the game. And now tonight, they beat Georgia yep. to start a new season. Yeah, and even if you go further back to earlier in the year, they had played Auburn uh, in Atlanta in that Chick-fil-A game and, and beat them. So they've, they've had their opportunities to go up against the SEC, and they fared pretty well. Not a bad opener, partner. No, not bad at all. Hey, I'll see you in Ann Arbor. Can't wait. <laughs> Our final score now, 38-35. Number eight beats number five. Clemson moves on. And join us next Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Notre Dame takes on Michigan in the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. ESPN is the home of the Vizio BCS National Championship game. For Kirk Kirk Street and Heather Cox, I'm Brett Musburger. So long from Clemson. Now it's time for the Ford wrap-up. Let's go to Robert Flores. Take it away, Robert.